Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the second part of our series, What If Deku Got Free Harim? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Massasin Maze from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Chapter 6, Friction and Conflict Once the fourth round was over, Mina, Tsuyu, Yuraka, and Toru left Momo's room, leaving Momo and Kayuka alone with Izuku resting on the Ayurazu's bed. The atmosphere was a bit awkward after what happened in the previous round, and at this moment Momo was thoughtfully hugging Izuku's matryoshka while next to him sat Kayuka watching him calmly. So Momo, what's wrong with you? Kayuka asked her friend intriguingly, wanting to know the reason for her silence. Momo lowers her head a little. I don't know, it's just that. I think we're doing something wrong, she replied to Kayuka somewhat dejectedly. Well, we all know that doing this is humiliating and too perverted, Kayuka said with a nervous smile as she scratched her cheek a little. Momo pulled herself together earnestly to look directly at Kayuka. I don't mean that and I think you know it too, Momo said to her friend and she stopped smiling knowing where she wanted to go. We're abusing Izuku-kun by taking advantage of the fact that he's drunk, she added, bowing her head, visibly disgusted with the actions they've done throughout the game. Kayuka, noticing her sad friend, smiled at her and put a hand on her shoulder. Hey come on, we're just doing this to save Midoriya from Mina's intentions and you know it, he said to Momo hoping to cheer her up like that. Even if that's our intention, it's still wrong what we do, plus Toru and Yuraka may also have the same intentions as Mina, Momo replied frowning a little with some anger. Kayuka, hearing him, sighed wearily. I see your point, but we still can't do anything about it, or will you throw in the towel to give it to Mina on a silver platter? Jiru asked calmly and immediately Momo raised her head. Of course not, Momo replied confidently and with conviction, making Kayuka a little surprised. Only, then she lowers her gaze with some sorrow. I wouldn't want to know that they took advantage of me in my most vulnerable moment, that they played with me like a toy and that they treated me like a prize in a silly game, Momo said, feeling guilty about what they're doing to Izuku. Kayuka looked back to see the damn green-haired man resting in the middle of the bed. Momo was right and she knew it, she knew they were wrong to do that kind of thing to him as if he were a toy as well as treating him as an object to be one in the game. She knew it was wrong, but she never wanted it to happen like that. She didn't expect to have to play that game to save him from Mina, but she had to. She was forced to do it or at least that's what she says to herself. It's not like she could look away and pretend to be indifferent to the idea of Mina abusing her kind friend. I understand and believe me I would get out of this perverted game if I could, but... Said Kairuka calmly and then turned to look at Momo who looked up to see him. I can't just leave Midoriya to Mina, she said with a comfortable, warm smile that surprised Momo. I know what we do wrong with Midoriya by manipulating him in this way, and... He'll probably be upset with us when he wakes up, Jiru said, lowering his head a little sadly at the thought of the green-haired man being upset with her. And I don't think Izuku-kun is going to get upset with us, we're just helping him, Momo said to her friend with some nervousness because the idea of Izuku getting upset with her hadn't crossed her mind. If that really happened, how was she going to face it? What could she say or do to get her forgiveness? Now his mind was more chaotic than before. But it's like you said Momo, it would be normal for him to be upset to know that he was abused like a toy and treated like a treat. Kayuka said with a small low smile looking into her lap, and then closing her eyes and putting a left hand to her heart. But it's okay for me, even if he's upset with me I can live knowing that I did the right thing, surely he would do the same, added the black-haired woman calmly and with a warm aura as she unconsciously reached out to grab a hand of the sleeping boy. Momo stood silently looking at her friend who had really touched her with her words. She seemed so peaceful in saying that that it seemed like she was sacrificing herself for a noble cause. She was looking to continue with the game to help Izuku despite knowing that she could earn his anger. This made Momo think about something. I know this question may be absurd, but, said Momo, still somewhat incredulous as she saw Kayuka catching her attention and opening her eyes to turn to look at him. What question? Asked Kayuka curiously, looking at Momo, who became a little nervous. And none, it's just my imagination or something, Momo said with a strained smile, thinking that maybe she was imagining things and maybe she shouldn't ask her friend that. Oh come on, do you really think I'm going to overlook it? Spit it out, Kayuka said to Momo with her usual relaxed and confident smile, already intrigued by what Momo would ask her. I was just wondering if you, said Momo lowering her head with a blush on her cheeks as she clung a little tighter to Izuku's doll. Do you like Izuku-kun? He asked Kayuka, looking at him with intrigue and seriousness. There the room was invaded by a suffocating silence that was only interrupted by the murmurs of the green-haired man. Momo had her gaze fixed on Kayuka while she seemed to have frozen at this sudden and compromising question. Kayuka's mind was overwhelmed by the sensations Izuku made him feel, and at that his heart began to beat fast and his cheeks began to faintly red. She didn't know what to say, what to feel, or what to think in those moments, but she knew her friend was waiting for an answer and just swallowed hard trying to stay calm. Not at all, I only see him as a friend, Kayuka replied simply and shaking a hand in front of his face in denial with the intention of taking away Momo's curiosity. 
Really, I could swear that for a moment it seemed that, said Momo, not very convinced by her friend's answer, because she could assure that she perceived some closeness from Kayoyuka when she talked about Izuku. It's just up to you, Kayoyuka stressed, disguising nonchalance and tranquility while internally she was in a sea of nerves. After that, both girls fell silent again, but now the atmosphere was lighter than before. Momo stared at her lap thoughtfully while Kayoyuka looked up at the ceiling calmly, trying to gather her thoughts. A minute later, Kayoyuka turned to look at her rich friend. Are you feeling better yet? Kayoyuka asked Momo with a relaxed smile. Momo raised her head and nodded seriously. I still think it's wrong what we're doing, but if it's to save Izuku-kun then I don't mind if he gets upset with me later. Momo replied with a determined look ready to accept the consequences in order to prevent their platonic love from going to be meanest. Kayoyuka, hearing him, smiled, trying to see the bright side. Well said, anyway we are talking about Midoriya, there is no one more understanding than him, surely once he finds out everything then he will forgive us, said the black-haired woman calmly, knowing how is that side of Izuku that attracted her. That is to say, he liked it. Right, Izuku-kun is very kind, Momo said with a small warm smile as she hugged Izuku's matryoshka affectionately. Hayoka stared at the way he said those words. You couldn't answer me last time Momo, what's the reason why you try so hard? Asked Jira to her black-haired friend who, when she heard him, tensed up a little. I, said Momo as the answer came to her mind. I'm doing it because it's Izuku-kun. He replied with conviction as he stood up to look at Kayoyuka. If it was anyone else in the class then it would be nice to give it to Mina, but if it's Midori I refuse to do it. Exclaimed Momo with strength and confidence in what she was saying, causing Kayoyuka to smile slightly as she looked to the side. Then I'm not the only one, Kayoyuka whispered to herself as she glanced sideways at Izuku who had a smile on his sleepy face, which caused the black-haired woman to soften a little and her cheeks to flush faintly. Did you say anything, Kayoyuka? Momo asked her friend intrigued. The ten minutes are over, the others should be coming, Kayoyuka said to Momo calmly, turning to look at him. Then, by coincidence, the door to the room opens, revealing Toru and Yuraka. Hello again, girls, Toru greeted them happily and with a few childish jumps. Yuraka followed him serenely until he fixed his gaze on Momo. Hello, said the brunette dryly and in a somewhat hostile manner and then approached her invisible friend. Now only Mina and Su chan are missing, Momo said calmly, ignoring Yuraka's greeting. Did you miss us? Mina asked her friends as she poked her head through the door frame and then entered with usual joy while carrying a medium-sized box behind her back. Behind her came Tsuyu, who closed the door as she entered. Hello again, Jiro, Tsuyu greeted them calmly and then approached the group. They all stood back in a circle on the ground, their attention fixed on Mina, who seemed to have something to say. Well, now that we're all here, we can pick up where we left off, Mina said to her friends excitedly, and then showed them the box she brought with it and had a hole in the upper area. I brought this box with me from my room, inside there will be papers with the suits that are under Momo-chan's bed, said the hairy woman as she looked specifically at Momo. Once she puts the papers, we'll all take one each round to change continuously, understand. She explained to them and they all nodded their heads. Then we'll leave it to chance, I like that idea as long as I don't get embarrassing suits, Kayoyuka said with a sideways smile and crossing her arms confidently. After all there would be no more embarrassing outfit for her than that of a nurse. Then a small magical transition occurs, fast forward some time later where the girls were already wearing the costumes they had been given. They're screwing me, aren't they? Asked Kayoyuka with an unfriendly face, for the suit he was now wearing was not exactly a decent one. He wore the costume of a black kanoichi with red trim. Iyukata had no sleeves revealing her arms and left a great view of Kayoyuka's neckline that was covered by a somewhat translucent black mesh. Then, too, her slender and provocative legs were exposed, and only a black skirt of the suit went down her crotch to her knees, leaving little to the imagination, for on the sides he revealed her skin up to her waist. She also wears a small black mask around her neck and black anklets. This costume is supposed to be a ninja's, isn't it? Kayoyuka exclaimed disgusted and with a strong blush on her cheeks as she pulled her skirt over her crotch with both hands in shame to cover the embarrassing underwear she was wearing. More specifically, it's from a kanoichi, Momo said to her friend calmly as she was hugging herself with some embarrassment, as she was literally wearing a copy of Mount Lady's heroine costume with some slight changes. The lycra of the costume was very close to the very shapely body of the black-haired woman highlighting her hips and breasts, but in the abdomen area and on the nipples there were purple hearts that gave an erotic touch to the costume. Momo was also wearing Mount Lady's horned mask and wore her hair down just like the heroine. I don't care, this is humiliating, Kayoyuka replied to her friend uncomfortably and without yet getting over her embarrassment. Don't be complaining Kayoyuka-chan, you saw that it was completely random. I don't like mine either, Yuraka said to Jiru as a reproach while she had one hand on her waist and with the other she adjusted the back of her pants that were tight. She was wearing a mechanic suit consisting of tight pants down to her calves with some broken parts at the knees and thighs, a tight white tank top that exposed part of the chestnut's neckline and navel. She also wore a slicked back trucker's cap and somewhat dirty black work gloves. Right, at least you're not cosplaying Mount Lady, Momo said to her ally serenely, thinking that her costume was more humiliating than Kanoichi's, because the hearts on the nipples made her very embarrassed even if she didn't show it. 
This bunny costume is like the ones I see in anime, Toru said to herself excitedly as she inspected herself. Looking over her shoulder at the end of her back there was a small, plush white rabbit tail. Yes, Toru was wearing a Playboy bunny costume at the time. Tight black Mayans that completely covered her legs making them look provocative. She wore black gloves up to her shoulders. The suit accentuated her waist and exposed her shoulders and in the cleavage area seemed to be more stretched due to the size of her breasts. Finally, she wears white bunny ears on her invisible head. It looks great on you Toru-chan, with that suit your figure stands out. Mina praised him happily as she had both hands on her waist and watched her invisible friend make some rabbit jumps. Mina, on the other hand, was wearing a suit. Well known. It consisted of black leather revealing part of her cleavage, showed her bare shoulders, gloves up to her forearms, black boots down to her calves, metal earrings on the back of the suit to adjust it, wore a pet leash with metal spikes and wore a belt where she carried a black whip. Mina was wearing a sadistic BDSM outfit. How come you can wear that without embarrassment? Mina Chan, Jiro, Tsuyu asked her hairy friend who was wearing such a perverted outfit without being embarrassed at all. Tsuyu wore a maid outfit with the skirt cropped to above the knees. The white stockings covered up to her thighs. She wears white gloves on her hands and a maid's headband on her head making the green-haired woman look like a real shy and elegant maid. It's not like I like to wear it either, it's just that I can tolerate it, Mina replied simply, shrugging her shoulders at her friend. You, on the other hand, look very pretty as a maid, Tsuyu Chan, said the hairy woman to Tsuyu with a big smile, making the frog girl blush a little. Gee thank you, but I'm still a little embarrassed, Jiro, Tsuyu replied, bowing her head shyly as her hands clutched the white apron she wore. Well, let's get started at once, we're taking a while, Mina said to all of them who were once again in a circle to start the round at once. It's Momo-chan's turn, isn't it? Asked Tsuyu with a finger on her chin as she looked at her black-haired friend. A question, Mina, it's allowed to give someone else's turn, right? Momo asked the hairy woman calmly, causing her to be surprised. Uh, well, I suppose so, replied Mina, somewhat unsure since she hadn't said that it couldn't be done in the rules. In that case, I'll give you my turn to challenge first, Momo said to Mina to the surprise of the rest except Kaioyuka. Um, okay, accepted Mina, a little confused, but she didn't want to think about it anymore and pointed at Toru. I dare you, Toru-chan, exclaimed Mina with a big smile as Toru fidgeted a little nervously in his place. Oh okay, Toru said somewhat anxiously and uneasily, hoping not to receive a challenge that would put her at a disadvantage with Izuku once he loses control. I dare you to caress Midoriya's body with your feet for five minutes, Mina challenged her and Toru looked a little surprised. Just that, it's a piece of cake, said Toru, relieved without seeing the difficulty of the challenge. It seems that she was lucky. But what you're going to do is do it subtly to stimulate him, got it. Mina said with a mischievous and perverted smile and then winked at her invisible friend who sighed in frustration. Me and my big mouth, Toru said to herself, a little downcast, and then stood up. Even Toru-chan, I know you can, Yuraka said to her ally with a confident look and a thumbs up to encourage her, which worked. I'll make it, just look at me, cried Toru with determination and plucking up the courage to approach the bed and climb on it to stand in front of Izuku, who has his legs and arms outstretched in all his comfort. Toru swallowed hard and directed his right foot at the green-haired man's torso to begin stroking him subtly as Kayoyuka set the timer on her phone. And gh, that's tickling, Izuku said somewhat uncomfortably because of the touch on his abdomen and moved a little accordingly. I'm sorry Midoriya, but I must do it to save you, Toru said to herself in a low voice and then proceeded with her task of going around Izuku's body with her feet covered by the stockings of the Playboy bunny suit. My foot wanders over his chest to slowly descend onto his abdomen causing him to start complaining more continuously and to release slight grunts that make me feel something strange inside. Seeing him so calm and being easily influenced by my touch makes me feel good in a way I didn't expect. He feels good in a different way than when he goes wild and subdues me. I think I understand Mina a little bit now. Phew, but I shouldn't think that way again. Ever since we started this game I've been falling again and again to that feeling that makes me experience Midoriya. It causes my heart to churn quickly and my body to not follow what my brain says. It causes my thoughts to become confused and tangled in ways I can't explain at all. That kind of thing only happens to someone in movies or anime when they're in love, and I'm not in love with Midoriya. Am I in love with Midoriya? VOK is kind, generous, honest, helpful, understanding, handsome and adorable, but... But what is this? Why can't I find any buts? There must be some reason why I can't be in love with him, right? Too heroic. Yes, that's right. He risks himself all the time to save people at the cost of his own safety, earning the admiration of many and the respect of even more people. Actually, that's just another good trait of him. ARGH. Why do you have to be so perfect, Midoriya? Because of that I can't help but feel this for you. That's why I didn't want Mina to stay with you and decided to participate in this game. Because of that I've been continuing in this game and I'll continue to make sure you're safe from Mina and Momo-chan's intentions. I know it's wrong all these kinky things and putting you as a prize but I must do it for you. Because I know you'd do it for me too because that's just the way you are. You focus on always helping people. The good thing is that now I have your rocket chan who doesn't want you to be in the hands of Mina or Momo-chan. Between her and me we will win this silly game so that you are only mine. 
W I mean so that you are safe. Though, that doesn't sound bad either, you could start to be with me more often and we would even become a couple that grows up to get married and have two daughters and a son and maybe a cat. It would be my dream come true. It really sounds great. Time, you can stop Toru-chan, Kayoyuka said to her secret friend who was about to put her foot down to the crotch of the sleeping green-haired man, it was lucky that the stopwatch had saved him. It's all right, Toru replied with a slight blush, waking up from his inner thoughts and then getting out of bed and standing in a circle with the others. Who are you going to challenge now, Toru-chan? Suyu asked her friend curiously. I think I'm going to give my turn to Momo-chan. I don't think it's right that I gave it to Mina, Toru said, calmly looking at Momo who smiled gratefully at her friend. Thank you Toru-chan, if it's of any use to you I'm going to do you and all of you a favor, Momo replied kindly and then turned to look at Mina seriously. I challenge Mina-chan, said the black-haired woman, and the hair-haired woman smiled sideways. Come on, I'm ready, Mina said defiantly, being prepared for anything they challenge her to. I dare you to be blindfolded and tied up bondage style for the entire round, forced to listen to what happens. Momo challenged with a small smile looking at Mina who was shocked while Jiru only blushed a little. But what? How come you challenge me that? Mina asked, excited and very surprised that the vice president of the class knew about this fetish. What's the matter? What's that bondage? Asked Yuraka innocently without knowing what they meant. Toru and Sui were just as confused as the chestnut and nodded wanting to know the answer. Kayuka approached the three of them with some embarrassment to whisper the explanation, and as she told them, their faces turned red and their eyes widened with surprise. Him Momo-chan, how can you dare that? Yuraka asked, red with shame and covering her face with both hands, Toru and Suyu being in state similar to hers as they expelled steam from their heads. Well, it occurred to me since it matches her suit, Momo replied simply, without taking her eyes off the hairy woman who was a little blushing. You can't challenge me to that Momo-chan, it has nothing to do with Midoriya and therefore it's against the rules, Mina replied with a nervous smile thinking that she had gotten away with the challenge. You're wrong Mina, if it has to do with Izuku-kun, Momo said, smiling with some malice, tensing Mina. You will be forced to listen to absolutely everything we do with him. You can consider it a little torture psychologically. The black-haired woman explained with an aura of victory closing her eyes innocently making her look intimidating, causing Mina to swallow in fear. Momo-chan is scary, Tsuyu commented, somewhat fearful of her friend as well as Toru. Raka, on the other hand, looked at him seriously, while Kayuka smiled sideways when he saw that Mina was cornered by the challenge that her ally had formulated. Of course we won't blame you if you don't want to, it's a very embarrassing challenge, Momo said, feigning pity for her friend as she took a can of beer to offer her. I'll do it, don't think I'll back down now, Mina replied with some anger and red cheeks, ready to meet the shameful challenge. Momo left Izuku's matryoshka to Kayoyuka and then looked at Mina again. You asked for it, said the black-haired woman with a faint sinister smile, and then proceeded to create the necessary materials. Now another magical transition takes place in which we advance to the moment when Mina is already tied by the wrists behind her sword along with her ankles by a red rope, which also traces its way down her crotch and around her breast so that at the slightest movement the rope tightens a little more. His eyes were covered by a black blindfold and in his mouth he wore a gag with a red morsel shaped like a sphere with holes that prevented him from speaking. The others were standing watching their friend squirm a little, complaining of discomfort, while a blush was on her cheeks and her breathing was hot, for clouds of steam were expelling from her muzzle and nose. You could tell that the rope was tight because it squeezed her breasts and seemed to rub continuously with Mina's intimacy, but they ignored that and only saw her complaining and writhing. I ask you, Momo-chan, how come you know about this? Toru asked Momo curiously, for she did not expect her friend to know about that kind of thing. I found a magazine of my father's at home, I only looked at the first few pages out of curiosity and then I burned the magazine because it was disgusting. But it was still useful in serving to silence Mina once and for all, Momo replied calmly, turning her back to Mina who had been left at the foot of the bed so that she could hear what would happen without being crossed. Well, the truth is that I feel calmer knowing that she is not going to make perverted comments, Kayoyuka commented with a small amused smile, being supported by the others who agreed with her. You seem to be uncomfortable with the ropes, Jiro, Tsuyu said. A little worried about the hairy woman who was rubbing her legs against each other as she seemed to try to untie herself without any result other than that the rope squeezed her a little more erotically. That's how it should be according to the magazine. Besides, she's not in a position to complain after accepting the challenge. That's her fault for not giving up so she'll have to put up with it, Momo said stoically and looking sideways at Mina and then averting her gaze. Now that Mina challenged Toru-chan, then her turn would go to another, Kayoyuka said calmly, looking at her friends to see who would be the next to challenge. Then I'll go on, Yuraka answered, raising a hand with a determined expression. And you, why? Asked Momo earnestly of the chestnut. Someone must be, right. Who do you think it should be? Asked Yuraka, holding her arm up, and Toru and Suyu joined her. I think Yuraka-chan should take that turn. Cried Toru with joy, supporting his friend and ally. And I believe that too, Jiro, Suyu said with some embarrassment and a slight blush on his cheeks. Yuraka smiled victoriously at the sight of Momo and Kayoyuka. We're three against two, that's all said and done, said the brunette somewhat mockingly to the two black-haired women who were looking at him seriously. Anyway, who are you challenging? 
Momo asked Yuraka calmly. Yuraka planted one hand on her waist while the other pointed at her friend, rival. You, Momo-chan, the brunette replied with a withering competitive and defiant look that caused Momo to squint as she hugged Izuku's doll. I dare you to, she said, leaving a silence, lowering her hand and closing her eyes with effort. And, I dare you to, Yuraka seemed to want to say something, as she clenched her fists and flushed her cheeks in search of expelling the words. Say it at once, exclaimed Kayoyuka, already impatient with the delay of Yuraka. I dare you to kiss Deku-kun on the lips, challenged Yuraka loudly and with her eyes closed, causing everyone to show surprised expressions. Kui, exclaimed Momo followed by the rest before the shocking challenge that was nothing more than kissing the green-haired man on the mouth. P.P. but why does it have to be? Asked a very red Momo with embarrassment and nerves, losing her composure and looking at Yuraka, who was with her arms crossed looking in another direction with apparent anger. I don't like to challenge you either, you know, Yuraka said, her cheeks flushed and a little puffed out, glancing at Momo out of the corner of her eye. Then let it be something else, Kayoyuka suggested with a tense smile since she disliked the idea of one of them kissing Izuku's lips very much, if perhaps the only one who could was her. That is, no one could. No, otherwise it will be easier for Momo-chan. Yuraka replied with a frown looking earnestly at the aforementioned woman who simply became irritated and could no longer stand the words she was holding back. What the hell is wrong with you, Yuraka-chan? Our target is supposed to be Mina, exclaimed Momo furiously at the chestnut that had evidently been against him for a few rounds and the reason simply could not find it. You tell me that, I've only seen you candy with Deku-kun as if it were your property replied Yuraka just as angry with Momo and also raising her voice knowing that her friend was very proud to be able to spoil the green-haired man as if he were her own. Izuku-kun is nobody's property, he's just comfortable with me, that's all, Momo said trying to calm down but still looked annoyed at her brunette friend who really seemed paranoid. Don't believe too much just because of that. What happens is that he's drunk and can't tell if it's you or not, you just think it's because you're special. Exclaimed Yuraka with clenched fists and glaring angrily at the black-haired woman while Tsuyu, Toru and Kayoyuka were about to intervene to calm them down. Momo was greatly offended by those words and closed her eyes tightly. And what right do you have to say that? You can tell you're just jealous, replied Momo forcefully and forcefully, being very strong words that affected the chestnut that responded reflexively. And what if I'm jealous? Cried Yuraka blushing and forcefully, leaving the others silent and surprised at this revelation, even Mina was silent at the cry of the chestnut. After that, the atmosphere became uncomfortable and everyone looked incredulously at Yuraka who looked away, crossing her arms. Just hurry up and drink your beer, I doubt you want to take a kiss away from Deku-kun like that, Yuraka said with some anger and already looking calmer without looking at Momo. The black-haired woman gritted her teeth when she saw that her friend was right, as much as she wanted to give Izuku her first kiss she couldn't unless he was aware and felt the same way about her. She also hated the idea of someone else doing it, but if she wasn't willing, then she couldn't do anything but lose her first life. Momo walked over to the crate of beers to grab one and then opened it to proceed to sip its contents calmly until she finally finished it. Wow, it's bitter, she said, somewhat disgusted with the taste of the drink as her cheeks flushed a little from the alcohol. The challenge is up to you, Tsuyu-chan, Yuraka said to her green-haired friend, knowing full well that she wouldn't agree to do it either. Okay, Jiro, Tsuyu accepted simply, with a slight blush on her cheeks. I knew you wouldn't want to, in that case take your... Wait a minute, did you accept? Said Araka, confused to see that Tsuyu had really accepted that challenge, and she was not the only one because the others were also very surprised except for Mina who seemed amused. Yes, I think I can do it so I don't lose yet, I can't let Mina get away with it, can I? Said Tsuyu with some nervousness and a blush on her cheeks as she played with her apron in a shy and adorable way. You're right, in that case go ahead, Yuraka said to her green-haired friend somewhat surprised and disconcerted without yet processing the idea that she would kiss Izuku. The truth is that she hadn't considered the idea that any of them would accept and now she regretted having made such a challenge. Tsuyu nodded with some embarrassment and then slowly approached Momo's bed, but before he got on he saw how Izuku slowly began to get up. T it looks like he's waking up, Tora said a little nervous when she saw how the green-haired man woke up, I just hoped he didn't do something crazy like he has done before. Jijiro, Tsuyu said, shrinking nervously as she watched Izuku sit up and stretch out her arms. Wewa, he yawned, stretching out his arms and then pulling himself together with a slight smile and a less obvious blush on his cheeks to look at Tsuyu. Hello little frog-chan, you look pretty, Izuku said to the frog girl who blushed at his compliment and lowered her head shyly. Thank you, Midoriya-chan, Tsu thanked and then raised her head to see him. Him, can you do me a favor? Suyu asked the boy with a bit of embarrassment and his heart racing at the thought of what he would do. Laero, just ask me and I'll destroy whoever is bothering you, Izuku replied with a broad smile and a tone that made it clear that he was still under the influence of alcohol. Can you close your eyes and not move? Suyu asked Izuku and Izuku obeyed and closed his eyes. So, asked Izuku with a childish smile, keeping his eyes closed. D that way, you won't have your eyes until I tell you, Jiro, Suyu said to the green-haired man nervously, receiving a nod from him who remained silent. 
Then, Suyu, under the incredulous, annoyed gaze of her friends, slowly approached Izuku while her hands were directed to her cheeks. How the closeness of our faces is reducing and my heart in the same way begins to beat faster and stronger than before, being able to hear it beating in my ears. My hands rest on Midoriya-chan's freckled cheeks, and I can now feel the warmth they give off, which only encourages me to get closer. I start to close my eyes letting myself be carried away by what I want and must do. I wouldn't do this if I wasn't Midoriya-chan, I do this exactly because it's him. I want to kiss him. Him I get closer to the point where I can feel his breath and surely Midoriya-chan feels mine as well. I feel my cheeks burn as that warm, weird feeling in my chest gets stronger and now our lips are just inches away from meeting until finally. The world freezes. Finally we both put our lips together and I can feel the warmth and softness of them. Our mouths come together and now at this moment it's just Midoriya-chan and me alone in the whole world. I feel his hands resting on my cheeks to bring me closer and deepen our kiss, which makes me happy and embarrassed in equal parts but I let myself go and our lips continue to explore each other in light frictions and encounters in which our breaths collide on our faces. And Midoriya-chan is kissing me just like I am kissing him. And I feel very happy about that, I'm giving my first kiss to Midoriya-chan. I really wish I had given it to him at a more appropriate time than now that he won't remember. But I couldn't hold back that pressure in my chest as I got an idea that Momo-chan would kiss him, nor do I like the idea that any of the others would do it. I know it's wrong to do this to you Midoriya-chan, maybe it's also your first kiss and I'm taking it away from you and you won't remember. I don't like this silly game made by Mina-chan, because we all do perverted things to you as if you were an object and it's not fair. I am in love with Midoriya-chan, as much as I could deny it I can't do it anymore as I'm experiencing this kiss between him and me that is only lasting a couple of minutes, a lot but at the same time very little for my bad luck. Now we need air and I moved away from Midoriya-chan breaking the kiss we had, time passes again for me and I can feel the clear envious looks of my friends on me. I slowly move away from Midoriya-chan, who is opening her eyelids, letting me see those captivating green orbs that seem to probe inside me, making me feel nervous. Still, I'm glad that my first time was with Midoriya-chan, plus the others couldn't have the first time of him either, it's just something we both share. Although it was a clumsy thing it was magical for me, I felt loved and happy to do it and I hope to repeat it again with Midoriya-chan when I am conscious. As they parted, Tsuyu looked at the ground shyly and blushed on her cheeks as she clung to the maid apron she wore. Izuku, on the other hand, opened his eyes and formed a playful and innocent smile looking at the frog girl. That felt so good frog-chan, what was that? Asked Izuku tilting her head slightly forward to see Tsuyu's face who blushed a little more at how close Izuku was to her. P you can call it a reward for obeying, Tsuyu replied smiling nervously at him and this struck a chord with the onlookers who for a moment could swear that Tsuyu was being flirtatious with Izuku. Now please stay calm and do what I tell you, Jiro, she said to the green-haired man calming down to give the boy a nice smile as if he were dealing with a child. Izuku nodded his head childishly. As orders, cute little frog-chan, Izuku replied with innocence and joy, causing Suyu to blush again at the compliment of the boy she likes. He seems more lucid but he's still under the influence of alcohol, maybe because the dream restored some consciousness, Momo said, maintaining her composure and looking at her friends as Suyu approached to join the group. Midoriya seems easier to deal with in that state, maybe that way it won't get out of control, Toru said with a hand on his chin thoughtfully, because perhaps he would no longer have to see the savage Niko Deku who would go out of control to make a real fuss, pleasant but still a ruckus. We don't know that yet, let's be cautious for now, Kayoyuka said, crossing her arms calmly, seeing her friends who nodded in agreement with her. Anyway, who are you challenging, Tsuyu-chan? Uraka asked her green-haired friend curiously. At that, the frog points its hand at Kayoyuka. I challenged Kayoyuka-chan to lick Izuku's hand covered in candy syrup until nothing is left. Tsuyu challenged him with a slight blush on his cheeks. Kayoyuka blushed a little, but still kept her composure. And it doesn't sound so bad compared to what I did before, Jiru said distorting indifference when the truth was that he was also embarrassed to think about doing that. Remember that you must do it in a sensual way like Mina-chan does, Jiro, Tsuyu added and now the others were surprised while Mina, still tied up, seemed to laugh at the misfortune of the black-haired woman. Is that really necessary? Asked Momo a little tense, looking at Tsuyu as she didn't understand the reason for that added detail. Yes, because according to the rules you have to increase in intensity, Jiro, Tsuyu replied, still somewhat embarrassed, looking at Momo who had no choice but to accept what she had said. But the way Mina does it is very shameless and humiliating, Kayuka complained nervously and trying to convince her kind and understanding friend to change the challenge. In that case you'll have to drink those, Kayuka chan Suyu replied to her friend as she calmly pointed to the case of beers, which unsettled Jiru and the others, as they did not expect the green-haired woman to be so raw and direct without giving in a little to her friendly side. Jiru only had to grit her teeth debating what to do and in the end she sighed in defeat to go get a can of beer to start drinking it all at once. She didn't understand what happened to Tsuyu but she definitely had something now. Anyway she wasn't willing to stoop to act like Mina in such a lascivious and lustful way and only decided to lose one life. She had two more to go anyway. With that the challenge will pass to Uraka-chan, Tsuyu said calmly, turning to look at the chestnut. 
I guess I have no choice but to accept, your rocker replied with some nervousness and a blush on her cheeks when the truth was that she felt a little anxious to meet the challenge. Are you sure? After all you must do like Mina-chan, Sui remarked with apparent concern to her friend, as if she only wanted to incite her to decline and lose a life. It wasn't possible. Tsuyu was the purest of them all. It wasn't possible that she wanted to sabotage the others, right? Don't worry Tsuyu-chan, I think I can handle that, your rocker replied to her friend with a cheerful smile and then turned to look at the others. Pass me the caramel syrup, please, she asked and Toru proceeded to pass the container to the chestnut who then approached Izuku who was sitting on the edge of Momo's bed. H hello Deku-kun, your rocker greeted him with a nervous smile, catching the attention of the chestnut who tilted his head to the side to look at the chestnut. Hello your rocker chan why are you dressed like that? Izuku asked the brunette with genuine childlike curiosity. Well, because we're in a little game, your rocker replied, scratching her blushing cheek. Oh, wow, I want to play too, said the green-haired man excitedly, raising his right hand enthusiastically at the idea. In that case, please allow me your hands and please stay still, okay. Your rocker said to Izuku calmly as she took both hands from the green-haired man and then knelt down in front of him. Will you let me play? Izuku asked curiously, and the brunette nodded. Of course, just please stay calm and don't do anything, your rocker replied to him and then proceeded to open the container of caramel syrup to start smearing it on both of the green-haired man's hands. It feels sticky and smells good, what is it? Izuku asked innocently to your rocker who seemed more focused on his hands and didn't answer and began to lick Izuku's index finger shyly. This had confused the boy who looked at him strangely and before he could say anything to Yurok, she was already sucking his finger while wrapping her tongue inside his mouth and then taking a breath and expelling some hot air while his cheeks flushed. After a few seconds she returned to the action, this time taking two of the boy's fingers to lick them more sensually than before, closing her eyes and letting herself go so that she looked very erotic at that moment, leaving traces of candy around her mouth. Oh god, I didn't expect this to feel so good, just thinking about what I'll be looking like makes me get a little warm. Who knew licking his fingers would be so exciting? Now I wrap my tongue around his fingers that are inserted into my mouth and I focus on the sweet taste of the caramel combined with the salty, and then sweet taste of Deku-kun's skin, leaving saliva in the places I pass and getting a little caramel dirty on my lips and cheeks. I'm a little embarrassed by this but I'm getting used to it now. I can't let my nerves interrupt this moment that is only Deku-kun and mine. I feel my cheeks blush and my vision blurs at the pleasure I feel in doing this, each time I move my tongue more skillfully and pervert it in a way I never expected to see of myself. I can look shameless right now when I lustfully suck on three Deku-kun fingers at the same time while wearing this tight, revealing mechanic suit, but how good it feels makes me forget about that embarrassment I felt challenges behind. Your tongue is tickling me, you're Raka-chan, Izuku tells me in a broken voice that only tells me that he is enjoying this service I am doing him, which makes me very happy, I am pleasing Deku-kun. Hold on just a little longer, Deku-kun, I have to clean everything up for you, I say coquettishly and then continue with my work. Don't worry Deku-kun, I'll save you from the intentions of Mina and Momo-chan, with Toru's help I'll win this game to have you all to myself. It may sound bad what I say about treating you as a prize and I understand it, but even so I cannot stop this feeling in my chest that orders me to have you for myself, to overcome the others so that I can be intimate with you. I don't like the fact that they all take advantage of your status as if you were a tool, I know that I include myself among them but my intentions are the right ones, to be by your side. I've always wanted to be by your side, I've denied it many times as if those feelings weren't true or had no basis to come true. But I just want to be happy with you Deku-kun, I want my best friend to be my boyfriend too, I want to go on dates with you, I want you to talk to me more, I want you to see me when you talk to another girl. All I want is to be able to be by your side to support you just like you've done with me since we met. You are my hero Deku-kun, I understand if you get upset with me when you find out what I have done without your permission, but even so I will not give up on you, I will strive to get your forgiveness. I will insist on showing you how much I have liked you since our first year, I want to express all these feelings that you have made me feel every time you saved me or greeted me in the morning with that smile that comes back to me madwoman. I love you Deku-kun, and if I have to win this game to have you for me then so be it, I will assume the consequences of my actions as long as I don't see that you are with someone else. Cause I want you only for my Deku-kun. When the caramel syrup was completely wiped from Izuku's hands, Yuraka was still licking and sucking his fingers as if he didn't care about finishing the challenge. It took Momo, Kayoyuka, Toru and Suyu to clear their throats sonorously, waking Yuraka from her trance to return to reality and realize that there was no more candy to remove, and therefore she had to stop, which she did because she did not want to be too suspicious in the eyes of Toru who was her ally. That's it, he said, closing his eyes with a blush on his cheeks as he stood up and prepared to walk away from Izuku. Yuraka chan the green-haired man called to her, and she turned to look at him. Yes, Deku-kun, asked Yuraka, curious at what her platonic love had to say to her. You look very sexy dressed like that, Izuku said to her with a flirtatious smile, and then winked at the brunette who turned red from nerves feeling happy inside while the others felt a little envious of Yuraka. 
GG, thank you, Deku-kun, now you better lie down, she said to the green-haired man with a nervous smile and scratching the back of her neck without being able to erase the blush on her cheeks. I'm not sleepy, I don't want to, Izuku replied like a little child, crossing his arms and closing his eyes, causing the girls to be moved by the sight of him so childish. At least sit quietly, Jiro, Tsuyu said to Izuku with a warm, cute smile. Okay, pretty little frog, Izuku replied with innocent glee, then hummed a song to himself as he undulated his head back and forth with his eyes closed. Yuraka was a little annoyed to see that Izuku listened to Tsuyu and not her, but she decided to ignore it and both she and the frog girl went with the others. All right, I think that's the end of this round, Momo said calmly as she tried to get over the small amount of envy she felt for both Yuraka and Tsuyu that Izuku seemed to like. Wait a minute, Toru said, catching the attention of the others. What's wrong, Toru-chan? asked Kayuka intriguingly to her secret friend dressed as a playboy bunny. It's true that we have Mina tied up, isn't it? Asked Toru, looking at her friends. Yes, that's right, Momo replied, seeing the obvious without understanding what her friend was trying to get at. So that means there's no point in continuing the game now that Mina can't do anything to Midoriya, exclaimed Toru with excitement when he finally saw what would be the end of the perverted game, which made everyone surprised to recognize that and Mina stiffened to start squirming harder. You're right, it's our chance to finish this, Kayoyuka seconded with a small smile and crossed her arms under her breasts making them stand out a little through Konoichi's yukata. He but we can't do that to Mina, said Yuraka somewhat nervous when she saw that the game could end. The truth is that she wanted to continue and win so that she could have Izuku with her, but she couldn't say that to her friends and therefore she had to look for a valid excuse. We'd be taking advantage of her and she'd be upset with us for doing that to her, the chestnut would say with a nervous smile and raising a finger in an explanatory way. She can think what she wants, but she's the one who wants to rape Midoriya. I think it's a small price to pay for ending this as soon as possible without hurting him anymore. Kayuka replied seriously and sharply, leaving the brunette speechless who took a step back and shrugged his shoulders with some disappointment. There, a hand rests on Jiru's shoulder. Wait a minute, kayuka chan Momo said to her ally, capturing her attention. I don't like the idea of continuing this, but... I think we should beat Mina at her own game, only then will we make sure she doesn't try anything to abuse Midoriya again, said the black-haired woman with a determined look while a small part of her thought similarly to Yuraka, only she didn't even know. I think we'll continue too, Jiro, Tsuyu said with a small smile looking at Kayoyuka who was thoughtful for a few seconds until she sighed in defeat. I suppose you're partly right, Kayoyuka agreed, closing her eyes indifferently when the truth is that a small part of her thought the same way as Yuraka and Momo, she should continue with what she had started. Then I'm going to untie Mina since the round is over, Toru said calmly and then walked to where Mina was to proceed to free her. Again, another magical transition occurs in which we move further back in time to when they were all in a circle again while Mina stood idly by, glaring at them angrily. I still can't believe they were planning to do that to me, said Mina to the others in reproach without believing that they were about to betray him to end the game. Well, to say plan is to give us a lot of credit, let's just say that it was improvisation on the fly and things turned out like this, Momo said calmly without paying much attention to Mina's continuous complaints that she had been letting out for two minutes. Anyway, I'm glad they decided on their own to keep playing, I knew they liked the game, Mina said, changing her mood to a cheerful and pleased smile. Apparently you only listen to what you want, Yuraka said with a drop of sweat on the back of her neck at the particular personality of her hairy friend. Either way, take a piece of paper for the costumes we'll be wearing next round, Kayuka said to the others calmly, taking the box in her hands so that Momo, Toru, Yuraka and she could start choosing their roles. Mina, for her part, discreetly approached Tsuyu who was next to her. Hey, Tsuyu-chan, he said quietly, catching her attention. Very good job, you did great deceiving them, said Mina with a knowing smile to wink at the green-haired woman. I'm only doing it because of what you promised me, Mina-chan, Jiro, Tsuyu replied to the haired woman with a bit of seriousness and a blush on her cheeks. Sure, you just go on as you have until now and you will have your share of the prize, Mina replied, giving Tsuyu a few nudges of companionship and confidence. What are you two talking about? Come and take your papers, Yuraka said to Mina and Tsuyu as she motioned for them to come and take their papers. Okay, replied Mina with a big enthusiastic smile, raising her hands in amusement and then approaching, leaving Tsuyu there, who looked thoughtful as she watched Mina take a piece of paper from the box. Flashback. I have an interesting proposal for you, Mina said to Tsuyu with a sideways smile in the bathrooms. Jiro, said Tsuyu, puzzled as she raised an eyebrow. What proposal, Mina-chan? Tsuyu asked her hairy friend who had caught her attention. How does it sound that we share Midoriya, Tsuyu-chan? Mina asked Tsuyu with a mischievous smile followed by a flirtatious wink that made the frog girl blush a lot. Me what are you talking about so suddenly, M. Mina-chan? Asked Tsuyu, nervous and surprised at Mina's question that had taken her by surprise. 
At this, Mina began to walk calmly and her hands behind her back around Suyu, making her more nervous than she already was. You know, you and I helped each other win Midoriya and then we both shared it, simple, right. Mina said to Tsuyu with an innocent smile as if it were a simple matter. And I have no interest in that, Mina-chan, Tsuyu replied to her friend shyly and bowing her head with red cheeks. At that, Mina grabbed Tsuyu's shoulders from behind her, causing the frog to flinch. Oh come on Tsuyu-chan, you can't fool me as easily as the others, as Shido said to her friend as she brought her mouth to her ear. You can tell from afar that you like Midoriya, or are you going to tell me that you don't like him? He asked Tsuyu in a playful tone, making his face turn as red as a tomato. And it's not that, exclaimed Tsuyu embarrassedly, causing Mina to tear herself away from her in amusement. And Midoriya-chan is kind, helpful, generous, honest, heroic and very brave. It's impossible not to like him, Jiro, said the green-haired woman shyly and looking at the ground while an image of Izuku smiling at her passed through her mind, which made her feel a certain warmth in her chest. But it's more than that, isn't it? Said Mina calmly as she approached step by step to be in front of Tsuyu who put both hands to her chest over her heart. I feel a pressure inside me when I'm close to him and with these challenges that feeling becomes heavier and makes me feel a lot of warmth in my body as well as happiness. Suu described, feeling the rapid beat of his heart just remembering that feeling that the green-haired man made him experience. That's because you're in love, Suu chan just like I'm interested in Midoriya, Mina said, pointing to herself with a thumb and a big smile as she closed her eyes. Even if that's true, I reject your offer and I can't think of being a participant in something as indecent as sharing it. Jiro, Tsuyu refused, looking away trying to stand firm in his decision. Mina shrugged her shoulders simply and began to walk with her hands on her sword back and forth with a stern expression. I'm being generous, Suyu chan The way things are going you're going to lose and you'll be left out with no chance of winning the sexy prize, Mina said to her friend and then turned to look at him with an intense look that intimidated Suyu. I'm offering you the opportunity to share it in exchange for you joining forces with me. It's not a bad deal, is it? said the hairy woman forming a sideways smile on her face as if she were getting into her friend's mind to convince her. I'm not sure, Tsuyu said, shrinking in place uncertainly and playing with her hands. What we're doing, this game, everything we've done is wrong. We're doing everything taking advantage of Midoriya-chan's state. I don't think it's right, Jiro, she said without agreeing with the things that have happened. Well, whether you like it or not, there's going to be a winner and it's likely that it's not you, Mina said to Tsuyu, turning her back to him and then looking at him sideways with a slight smile. On the other hand, if you help me, you will receive your share regardless of whether you lose, added the hairy woman, causing the frog girl to look pensive at what she said. Tsu thought earnestly and with a finger on his chin. She thought, convincing herself of what she thought was the right way. I guess it's okay, Tsuyu said nervously, looking at Mina, who smiled broadly to turn to look at him and take his hand to shake it. Excellent, I'm sure our alliance is the best, exclaimed Mina happily, consolidating her alliance with Tsuyu with emotion. See how did you know I like Midoriya-chan? Suyu asked Mina with some embarrassment once she let go of his hand. That's simple. Test number one was the way you stroked his arm, Mina replied simply, remembering that moment while Suyu blushed a little. The second test was when you licked his body in such a way. Lascivious, the hairy woman continued, smiling a little mischievously, while the little frog grew redder. The third was when you got upset when I said I would kiss him, and the last one was your attempted kiss when you were alone with him, Ashido concluded, amused as she watched her friend expel smoke from her head in embarrassment. Yu Yuraka chan told you. Suyu asked Mina, surprised to see that her friend knew what she had tried. Nope, but you just did it, Kukuku, Mina said with a playful smile as she caught her friend in the trap and then laughed a little while Suyu covered her face in shame. In short, you're very obvious Suyu-chan, the strange thing is that the others didn't notice, said the funny hairy woman looking at her new ally. Shame on you, Jijiro, Suyu said, her face red and steaming from her head when she saw herself completely exposed. Mina smiled happily and then offered her hand to Tsuyu, capturing his attention. Either way, it's a pleasure that we're allies, Tsuyu chan Ashido said to the green-haired woman with kindness and genuine happiness at having a companion. Tsuyu somewhat shyly reciprocates the handshake and the hairy woman widens her smile. Go for that Midoriya, cried Mina, eagerly ready to win for herself and her friend. H hi, Tsuyu said with a little nervousness and with a slight blush on her cheeks. Perhaps it wasn't so bad to team up with her lively friend, who, though perverted, was still the mind who was pleasant to cooperate with. End of flashback. What are you doing standing there, Tsuyu chan having a flashback or something? Toru asked her green-haired friend, amused as Tsuyu was staring into nothingness thoughtfully for almost a minute of silence. Come and take your paper, Momo said to Tsuyu with a slight smile as she handed her the box with the names of the costumes and at that the frog girl nods her head to approach her friend. Meanwhile, Izuku sat on the edge of the bed, looking a little dizzy and smiling as he muttered to himself. Then he looked down at her lap as he rubbed her legs and had his hands on her crotch looking uncomfortable for some reason. Why I, Izuku said as he squirmed trying to hold on. I need to go to the bathroom, he added with a silly smile and tilted his head slightly to the side, wanting to urinate. 
the girls would face this challenge as their rivalries increase and alliances strengthen their bonds. Each of them had their own ways of thinking about their path to be the victors and they certainly would not have it easy because of the intervention of their rivals. That game was far from over. Chapter 7, There Is No Return it was already the beginning of the sixth round of the game and the girls had already changed into the costumes they had been given minutes before. Okay, now that we're all ready, let's take a look, said Mina with a broad smile wearing a sexy devil outfit that consisted of high-heeled boots and red leather that covered above her knees, a red miniskirt with black borders that barely covered anything and left a lot to the imagination, a very tight red bikini, a small pair of demon wings on her back, a small demonic tail sticking out of her skirt and finally she was wearing some small red horns on her head. This is a strange thing, why would Mina give away a copy of the sports uniform? Asked Kayuka somewhat annoyed and slightly blushing hugging herself and looking at her suit, which was none other than Yui's sports uniform. Although it was only the bottom garment while she was wearing a black sports bra that revealed her shoulders and covered her cleavage to some extent. For the same reason you're embarrassed to wear it, Mina replied mockingly and pointing at him with amusement, causing Kayuka to look away in annoyance. What nonsense, said the black-haired woman, feeling embarrassed even though it was just a uniform, perhaps because of the fact that her front was shown so vulgarly because her bra was tight. Now that's something revealing, Momo commented blushing and embarrassed seeing her sexy cowgirl outfit, which was made up of brown leather cowboy boots up to the calves with fringes, a blue mini short tight to the thighs, a leather holster with toy guns and also with a rope wrapped on the side. She also wears a plaid shirt that revealed her entire abdomen and was tied between her breasts to cover them with some difficulty, and lastly she wore a cowboy hat while her long hair was loose cascading over her shoulders. A cowgirl suit for you, it's like you were born to wear it, Mina said to her friend, praising her for how good she looked in the suit and how sexy it looked. No comment, Momo replied hugging Izuku's matryoshka and closing her eyes with a blush on her cheeks, as she felt deeply ashamed to wear such garments that were somewhat tight in the chest and butt area. But it's really a coincidence that your Raka-chan got that cow suit, said Mina amused, turning to see her brunette friend who was hugging herself trying to hide as much as she could. Your Raka's Vakita costume consisted of a bra and sleeves with a cow pattern and black pants that leaves her right leg completely revealed, a pair of gloves and boots, as well as a belt with a gold buckle in the middle and a leather pouch around her waist. Her hair was also different with a pair of gloves and boots, one on each side of her head and with two strands of her hair running down the sides of her face to shoulder height. Her appearance resembles Lucy Hartfilia's star-dressed Taurus. This is embarrassing, does it make me look fat? Asked Yuraka to Toru, blushing and embarrassed to wear such a suit. Not at all Yuraka-chan, let's just say that it looks good on you, Toru said to her ally and friend who seemed self-conscious about her figure. When the truth was that she looked really sexy with the right measurements to show off that suit in all its splendor, highlighting her butt and legs. I'm still embarrassed to wear it, said the brunette shrugging her shoulders and hugging herself embarrassedly, because she couldn't help but feel that way at the thought that Izuku would see him that way. Why are you only wearing the apron naked, Toru-chan? Suyu asked her secret friend, who was wearing only a white kitchen apron with pink embroidery on the sides. Well, there was a red bikini, but since I'm invisible, that doesn't matter, exclaimed Toru happily and twirling around on herself, feeling lucky to be invisible in those moments, because she was used to being naked most of the time and there were no problems. Right, and don't forget Suyu-chan's little angel, said Mina amused and playful, hugging her green-haired friend with an arm around her neck, causing Suyu to lower her head with a slight blush on her cheeks. Sui wears an angel outfit that was made up of white stockings up to her knees, a small white dress that accentuated her breasts and waist and a mini skirt that barely covered her white panties. She wears a small pair of wings on her back, a tiara-like halo on her head, and she also wears white gloves up to her elbows. She's represented very well by her suit, as well as by you, Kayoyuka said, looking at Mina with a frown. I'll take it as a compliment, Mina replied with simplicity and an amused smile, letting go of Tsuyu and shrugging her shoulders with some mockery. It wasn't, Kayuka remarked angrily, because the truth is that Mina really behaved like a demon, it was fortunate that an angel like Tsuyu didn't behave that way. But it's funny, an angel and a demon in the same round, Toru said happily, looking directly at Mina and Tsuyu without really knowing that they are actually allies. And let's not forget Momo-chan as a cowgirl and Yuraka-chan as a cow, it's as if we were together, added Mina with an amused and innocent smile seeing the black-haired woman and the brunette who, when they heard him, turned to look at each other with frowns. Ha, huh. apparently you have to play the country girl Momo-chan, you can tell it's something opposite to what you're used to, said Yuraka with a defiant sideways smile and a mocking tone directed at Momo, who was offended but would not let herself be defeated. Excuse me, at least I'm not part of simple cattle to be processed, Momo replied with superiority and a certain arrogant tone that irritated the chestnut in a great way while the tension between them rose and you could even see lightning striking in their eyes as they approached each other. 
Don't tell me that because you're wearing that suit you already think you're tough as a cowgirl. Yuraka said with a mocking and tense smile as she reached Momo's front being both very close and bumping their breast. Noticing the difference in height between them but still Yuraka looked at him defiantly. Momo smiled arrogantly, knowing that her answer would really hurt. If you look fat in that suit, said the black-haired woman and Yuraka opened her mouth offended and hurt while the others covered their mouths in disbelief of what Momo had said. Hey, hey, there's no fighting, Izuku said with a small silly smile, catching the attention of everyone who turned to see how he got out of bed with some awkwardness. Deku-kun, divided by Izuku-kun, asked Yuraka and Momo, intrigued to see that he had interrupted their little quarrel. What are you doing, Midoriya? Toru asked the green-haired man curiously. The boy managed to stand up and was dizzy, tilting his head to the side. I have to go away for a while, girls. I feel like going to the bathroom, said the drunk and disoriented green-haired man to start walking in the direction of the exit. Will she be able to go in that state? Suyu asked the rest of her friends, leaving behind the tension that had formed. Izuku was about to open the door, but he couldn't get a grip on the knob, and it didn't help that he could barely stumble upright. I doubt it, Kayoyuka said with a sigh, closing her eyes and then turning to look at her friends. Someone must take him to the bathroom. She said, her cheeks flushed slightly, and the others looked surprised. W what? The others exclaimed, blushing and getting a little nervous at the idea. In that state you can't go on your own, someone must accompany you and wait outside, Kayoyuka explained trying to stay calm and Mina smiled bitingly. I like the way Kayoyuka-chan thinks, we can't just leave it like that, Mina said to her friends with a broad smile that didn't give the others a good feeling. One of us must go with him, she declared, and in the meantime he stood leaning his hand against a wall to keep from falling. Mina stared at her ally and smiled innocently. How are you, Tsuyu-chan? asked the hairy woman, taking Tsuyu by surprise, who blushed even more. Accompany Midoriya-chan to the bee bathroom asked the little frog nervously and turning to see Izuku who greeted him innocently. I don't think I'm ready for that, she replied, bowing her head in embarrassment and shyness, causing Mina to sigh tiredly. In that case, I'll take it, cried Toru, raising a hand, which didn't help as she was invisible and didn't have her gloves on. Toru-chan and I can take it together, Yuraka proposed with a nervous, somewhat blushing smile while Toru next to her nodded his head, which the others couldn't see either. Nope, only one can go, besides I have someone better in mind, Mina told them with a funny smile causing intrigue in her friends. To whom? asked Momo curiously. To Kayuka chan the author of the idea, replied Mina, pointing her two hands at the aforementioned one, who widened her eyes a lot and blushed even more. W what? Kayuka exclaimed, nervous and surprised, taking a step back. Of course, you are the one who proposed the idea and you're the one who's going to carry it out, Mina replied simply, shrugging her shoulders simply as if she were talking about something obvious. Momo stood idly by with one hand on her chin. I agree that you should wear it Kayoyuka-chan, she said, turning to look at her ally with a smile, knowing that she is trustworthy except for Yuraka and Mina. Suyu, on the other hand, approached Izuku. Kayoyuka-chan will accompany you to the bathroom, Midoriya-chan, he said politely, earning a nod from the dazed green-haired man. Okay, Frog-chan, Izuku accepted with a broad smile that made the frog girl blush and Kayoyuka who would be in charge of accompanying him. Do I have the option to refuse? asked Kayoyuka, raising her hand with her eyes closed. Nope, Mina replied amusedly and tilted her head to the side, causing Kayoyuka to sigh. Then I guess it's fine, Jiru said defeated and slightly blushing, approaching Izuku who looked at her curiously. Give me your arm, Midoriya, she asked him and he obeyed by putting his bare arm around her neck for support, and Kayoyuka opened the door and then they both left the room. Shouldn't we escort her to make sure she's okay? Remember that she'll be with Deku-kun, Yuraka said to the others with a tense smile, thinking to make sure that Kayoyuka didn't try something with her crush. We don't have to worry, Izuku-kun is not as unstable as before and Kayoyuka can call us in case something happens, Momo replied with her eyes closed and her back to him, blindly trusting her ally. Meanwhile, Mina surreptitiously approached Tsuyu to speak close to his ear. You would have taken that opportunity I gave you, Tsuyu-chan, Mina chided the green-haired woman with some annoyance, causing Tsuyu to bow her head timidly. I'm sorry, I was embarrassed, Tsuyu replied with a slight blush on her cheeks and shrugging in place as the very thought of accompanying Izuku to the bathroom was hard for her to process. With Kayoyuka and Izuku, they were both walking through the hallways on their way to the bathrooms that were on the same floor. Izuku found himself stumbling from time to time but luckily he was leaning on Kayoyuka who was staring at the road with a slight blush on his cheeks, trying to ignore the fact that he felt the green-haired man's body very close to his. You smell good, Kayoyuka-chan, Izuku told her friend with an innocent smile. Um, thank you, I guess, replied Kayoyuka raising an eyebrow feeling a little embarrassed by the compliment until they had finally reached the bathrooms. We're here, now come in and do what you have to do, she said to Izuku stopping and looking at him calmly so that he could go relieve himself. I'm a little dizzy and everything is spinning, Izuku said with a somewhat silly and adorable expression as his cheeks flushed. I need help, Kayoyuka-chan, he said to Jiru, bringing his face closer to hers, causing her to become nervous and blush more. And I can't help you Midoriya, yes I'm a girl and I can't go into the boys' bathroom, Kayoyuka replied she turned her head away with a nervous smile and sweated a little. 
Then I'll go into the girls' bathroom, Izuku said innocently and simply giving a thumbs up. That's not the point. I can't help you go to the bathroom, Kayuka replied nervously, trying to make the boy understand. I just need to pee. It won't be too much of a problem, the green-haired man insisted in a pleading tone, bringing his face closer to Kayuka again to make her doggy eyes. Pee but, said Kayuka, a little hesitant whether to accept or not, since the green-haired man's attack of tenderness had made her let her guard down. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone that I went into the girls' bathroom, Izuku said with an innocence that eventually made Kayuka sigh in defeat. Uff, I'll just hold you and close my eyes, is that clear? Said Kayuka, trying to appear demanding and authoritative, while still slightly blushing. The boy smiled happily at the answer. Of course, Kayuka chan thank you very much, Izuku thanked and she nodded her head with her eyes closed. In the end, it was impossible for her to say no to her friend. A few minutes later, almost six minutes later, they were both walking in the direction of Momo's room and Izuku could already walk on his own while Kayuka was red as a tomato with her hair covering her eyes while steam was coming out of her head. Thank you again very much, Kayuka chan Izuku said to the black-haired woman with a broad smile, still slightly blushing from the alcohol. Just don't mention it to anyone, Kayuka said, dying of embarrassment at what she had to see and hear inside the bathroom. They continued walking in silence and Izuku stared at Kayuka. Let's walk hand in hand, he asked innocently as he reached for hers. Huh, of course not, Kayuka replied nervously and surprised, pushing her hand away. Why, I washed my hands very well, Izuku said, ignoring the reason why her friend refused. And it's not about that, said Kayuka, blushing at the green-haired man's request. Then of what? asked Izuku, tilting her head slightly to the side with innocent curiosity, which left Jiru speechless and seeing herself cornered, sighed. Uff, only until we get there with the others, Kayuka said to him, closing her eyes and holding the hand of the boy who smiled broadly as they both walked. Kayuka chan Izuku called calmly. What's going on? asked Kayuka, opening one eye to look at him out of the corner of her eye. What she didn't expect was that Izuku with one hand would gently lift her chin and then kiss him on the lips. Kayuka widened her eyes as the colors rose to her face at the sudden kiss the green-haired man was stealing from her. Then, after a minute, he pulled away, releasing Kayuka's lips who were stunned and genuinely surprised, briefly ignoring how good she felt. Why was that? asked Kayuka, looking puzzled at the tall green-haired man who smiled amused at her question. It was a reward for helping me, so did Renita-chan when I listened to him, Izuku replied to his friend with innocence and somewhat dazed, smiling happily. She, on the other hand, had no words in those moments, they escaped from her mind the moment her brain short-circuited. He couldn't reprimand Izuku for so boldly stealing his first kiss, he wasn't aware of what he was doing and it was partly the alcohol's fault, besides. It's not like he disliked it. Are we leaving? Izuku asked her friend with an adorable smile that woke her up from her thoughts. She shook her head to calm herself and looked at him. Sure, she replied with a slightly silly smile, then lowered her head with a strong blush on her cheeks and started back to Momo's room. In Momo's room, Kayuka and Izuku were already entering the room through the door, catching the attention of the other girls who were sitting in a circle. We're here again, Izuku exclaimed excitedly, his hands in the air while behind him was a slightly blushing Momo. How did it go, kayuka chan asked Momo to her ally and friend who turned to see her calm. I waited outside and there were no problems, Kayuka lied, thinking it was best to cover up what she really had to do, as well as avoiding telling about the kiss she had with Izuku. In that case, I think we can get started, Mina said excitedly as Tsuyu approached Izuku. Please sit on the bed, Midoriya-chan, Tsuyu asked with a sweet smile, and the green-haired man nodded. Of course, Frog-chan, Izuku accepted simply, and so he did and went to sit on the edge of Momo's bed. Then the first to challenge is your rocket chan Toru said calmly, seeing his ally who nodded his head. I defy Kayoka chan Yuraka declared, causing her to sigh wearily. Can you really give me a break? Asked Kayoka rhetorically, already mentally exhausted from interactions with the green-haired man who somehow always managed to make a mess of her mind. T I dare you lick chocolate syrup from Deku-kun's abs, the brunette challenged her somewhat nervously, and the black-haired woman's cheeks blushed. Oh, that's a good challenge, Yuraka chan Mina praised Yuraka with a big smile and a thumbs up. You're free not to accept if you want, Kayuka chan Toru told Jiru as he tentatively showed him a can of beer. Forget it, I'm going to do it, Kayuka replied earnestly and plucking up the courage to stand up. Pass me the syrup, she added, and Mina handed the container to her friend. Then Kayuka went in front of the green-haired man to look at him with a small calm smile that barely managed to hide the nerves he was actually feeling. Hey Midoriya, I'm going to need you to lie on the ground, please, Jiru said to the green-haired man and he nodded without problems. Of course, you helped me after all Kayuka-chan, he replied innocently and calmly and proceeded to lie down on the floor looking at the ceiling. Kayuka crouched down until she was sitting next to him. I'm going to need you to please hold out until I'm done, okay, said Kayuka with an obvious blush on her face and then proceeded to pour the syrup on Izuku's marked abdomen. It's a little cold, the green-haired man complained at the thick chocolate that was beginning to cover his abdomen. Okay, start, Mina said to her friend, starting the challenge. I slowly lower my head to above Midoriya's worked abdomen and begin to shyly lick the chocolate resting on her skin. 
I have one hand holding a strand of my hair behind my ear so it doesn't look chocolate-stained while my other hand rests on the floor. I slowly savor the sweet chocolate in my mouth as I move my head so I can lick the various spots on Midoriya's abdomen. To all this I feel my cheeks burning while the rest of my body begins to heat up. I feel a strange tingling sensation in my crotch that I have felt before, all because of Midoriya that causes that reaction in me. This is all very unfair to me. First there are the things I had to do with him, accompany him to the bathroom and then he steals a kiss from me and then I have to do this, is this all a divine joke or am I unlucky? Although it's not like I dislike the kiss he gave me, I still remember the texture of his warm and soft lips imprisoning mine firmly without giving me the slightest chance of escape. He caught me off guard causing my mind to disconnect and that strange sensation in my chest to increase its intensity. That damn feeling has me confused. Now when I think of Midori I can't stop getting nervous and my heart is fluttering. I can't think with the same clarity and again only the moment comes to my mind when our hearts were beating to the same beat. This is wrong, it must be. I can't feel what I think I'm feeling, can I? That I feel strangely happy to be next to him doesn't mean anything, nor does it mean that I want to taste his lips again and share a bed with him again, those things don't mean anything either. It's just some kind of weird illness that keeps me from keeping my composure in front of him, just that. Although, I'm not sure if I'm just denying the obvious. My tongue now comes into contact with her firm and warm skin asking to feel her abs with my tongue that continues minutely in its task without hesitating to continue. I feel like I'm slowly ceasing to think so clearly and my instincts start acting on their own. I hope I don't look lewd and kinky like me. I hope I'm not going crazy for the captivating taste of Midoriya's skin on my taste buds. I hope I'm not seriously considering that what I'm feeling is what I'm thinking. I hope this isn't. Love. Time. Exclaimed Yuraka when she saw that there were no more traces of chocolate on her friend's skin. But even so, it seems that Kayuka had not listened to her as she continued to lick Izuku's abs in a thorough way while shaking his ass slightly. You can stop now, Kayuka chan Toru said to her friend as she approached her to place a hand on her shoulder, causing the black-haired woman to wake up from her thoughts and push Izuku's head away. I knew, I just had to make sure, Kayuka replied with a nervous, blushing smile as she stood up scratching her cheek. Sure, and I was born yesterday, said Mina, looking in another direction mockingly. Kayuka turned to look at the green-haired man who was barely opening his eyes. You can get up now, Midoriya, she said to the green-haired man with a small nervous smile as she offered him a hand to get up. Kayuka-chan felt rich, I want you to do it again, Izuku said, taking Kayuka's hand to stand up with an innocent smile, making the black-haired woman more nervous. That can't be, Kayuka said, looking away with an even more noticeable blush on her cheeks. Why not? asked Izuku curiously, bringing her head closer to Kayuka's face, which annoyed the others in the room. He well, Jiru tried to reply, but the closeness between their faces didn't allow him to think clearly and the words just didn't come out of his mouth. At that moment, Momo arrives at their side, separating them to look at Izuku with a cute calm smile. Because we're playing an Izuku-kun game, then we're not sure when we're going to lose, she replied, inwardly jealous of her ally's closeness to the green-haired man. At that response, Izuku slammed his fist into his palm. Oh I understand, in that case please don't lose Kayuka-chan, Izuku said to Kayuka with a wide cheerful smile, which made the girl blush even more and annoyed the others a little. Sure, I won't, Kayuka said with a faint goofy smile on her face and playing with her jacks as she looked in another direction, inwardly happy for the boy's words of encouragement without knowing the reason. Well, then who are you challenging, Kayuka-chan? Toru asked her friend curiously, wanting to leave behind that honeyed atmosphere that had formed between Izuku and Kayuka. I challenge your raka chan Jiru replied, returning to her serene demeanor, though still slightly blushing. Yes, I suppose it's fair, Yuraka said calmly, folding her arms ready for the challenge. I dare you to rub your breasts on Midoriya's back with lube for five minutes. Kayuka challenged her with a small sarcastic smile in revenge. And I suppose you can't challenge me to anything else, can you? Asked the brunette, bowing her head, knowing the answer. No, now do it or drink, Kayuka said, looking a little mockingly at her friend who had sought to be treated like this. Yuraka stood up with a slight blush on her cheeks. Pass me the lube, she asked and tore past the lube to his ally while internally wishing him luck and giving him his support. It's a good thing I brought it from Toru-chan's room, said Mina relieved. Then Yuraka nervously approached the bed to climb up and stand behind Izuku who looked strange. Oh oh okay Deku-kun, I'm going to need you to stay still while I'm going to massage your back. She said, blushing and not quite sure how to explain what she'd be about to do. Unmassage soon am I by in, Dijo Izuku Sarando Los Ojos Kan Kama Y Una Pequina Sanra Sapera Jurar Saver Al Friend. Ian Tonsis. Aquivoy, C. Dijo Le Castana Mas Para C. Mismajan Tando Un Poco Sus Brazos Para Preter Sus Pechos Y Lugo Ponerals Lubricante Sin Importer El Sostin. Provocando quail liquido les haga verse algo brulosos y resbolosos. Lugo de iso your raca con vergens a sea circo para comenzar a restregar sus suaves pechos con la fuerte spalda del pelivert. Que son esas cosas que si sienten suaves. Pregunto izuku con curiosidad manteniendo los ojos cerrados mientras sencha como dos bolas suaves pero a la vez firm si prejanaban contra su espalda. Y esas son. 
Unos Malvaviscos, Deku Kun, Respondio Uraka Kan Demasiata Virgens a Camopera de Surla Su Major Amigo Y Amor Platonico Quedlia Staber Restrigando Los Pechos en la Espalda. MMMM, Puto Pro Barlos, Preganto Izacube Bando Un Poco de Sindo Mortar Y Commerce Isos Grands Malvaviscos. Uraka's face turned like a tomato at Izuku's question. And you can't, she exclaimed nervously and closing her eyes, causing Izuku to become a little depressed. Wow, he said, puff out his cheeks adorably and then continue enjoying his stimulating massage. I'm going to kill Mina after we finish this stupid game. I can't believe I'm rubbing my breasts against Deku Kun's back. I'm going to die of shame if he remembers this tomorrow. I'm going to reach into space without stopping floating in shame. Q, but I can't refuse to do these challenges. I must endure as best I can to save Deku Kun from the intentions of Momo Chan and Mina Chan. It's the least I can do for him who spends his time helping me and saving me when I need it. Deku Kun is my hero, and now that I'm coming to terms with my feelings again, I can't afford to give up on this silly game. I must win to show Deku Kun how much I like it without others being there to stop me. Unlike Mina Chan and Momo Chan, my love for Deku Kun is real, and I won't let them take it away from me. And there is one thing I learned from Deku Kun is that I must never give up. That's why I can't do things by halves and I have to do my best, so I move my hands around Deku Kun's abdomen hugging him from behind to press my breasts even more against his strong, warm wide back. I feel how my body warms up more when my breasts rub against her skin, more specifically my nipples that are sensitive to every movement I make. The slippery lube only makes things worse, as my breasts slide against each other and his skin, intensifying my senses and allowing me to feel more deeply the hardness of Deku Kun in contrast to the softness of my breasts. I continue to massage without stopping as faint gasps escape my lips. What a big and wide back Deku Kun has now that I realize, it is firm and worked, it is very noticeable that it exercises very well to stay in shape. It's true, he trains every time to become a better hero, a hero like All Might who saves people with a smile, that's why I feel like his back feels so reliable like he can carry the weight of several lifetimes on it. Remembering those things only makes me fall in love with him even more, it's as if every bit of his being is a magnet for me, as if I unconsciously float around him like a planet, I'm just drawn to his gravity. My cheeks flush and my breath warms as I feel a familiar tingling in my crotch. I feel dirty for doing this but I must continue, it is my duty, right. I must strive only for you Deku Kun, I must make you feel good with my massage, I must make you feel my breasts in greater detail. I cling even tighter to his back causing my breasts to press more against him and in that way small moans involuntarily escape my lips as they further stimulate my nipples. I do this just for you Deku Kun and I'll never do this with anyone else, for me only you exist. You can stop now, you're Rakachan, Toru said to her friend and brunette ally who was really putting on a very perverted show by being so aroused as she rubbed her breasts so lasciviously on the back of the green-haired man who began to pant from the massage. Lost Chestnut was suddenly pulled out of her thoughts to focus her attention on her friends where Mina showed her the screen of her phone showing how the five minutes were over. D okay, Yuraka replied with a red face like a tomato of nerves and unable to look the others in the eye because of the shame she was feeling for having let herself go. Again they all stood in a circle and the brunette patted her cheeks to focus on continuing the game. Now I'm going to challenge Momo-chan, Yuraka said, fixing his serious gaze on the black-haired woman and his greatest rival at that moment. Why don't you surprise me, now the cow wants a fight, said Momo smiling with pride and superiority, because she was fed up with the chestnut always choosing her to challenge, it was obvious that it was personal. Yuraka smiled tensely with a vein on her forehead at Momo's provocation. I don't think you understand the position you're in, Momo-chan, said the brunette intimidatingly, her gaze darkening gloomily. And what are you going to challenge me to now, huh, Vakita, Momo asked, still smiling sideways and looking defiantly at Yuraka, who clenched her fists and bowed her head angrily. You asked for it yourself, Yuraka said with her eyes closed, then pointed at Momo accusingly. I dare you to lick honey from Deku Kun's lips. She challenged angrily, without much thought and assuming that the black-haired woman would not dare to accept. Well, I accept, or did you think you were going to intimidate me with that? Asked Momo with a small proud smile without letting herself be overcome by the chestnut and then stood up leaving Izuku's matrioska in Kaioyuka's hands. Pass me the honey to fulfill the challenge that you gave me, he added, extending his hand seriously and then receiving the honey that Yuraka gave him annoyed. Then the black-haired woman approached Izuku who was sitting on the edge of his bed. What are you going to do, Momo-chan? Izuku asked, for he now got used to the idea that something would be done to him if they approached him. He well, I'm going to, said Momo blushing and with a nervous smile trying to find the words to soften what she would do, but after a few seconds she gave up. I don't have an explanation for what I'm going to do, just please keep that little mouth of yours closed while I fulfill my challenge, okay? She said gently to him who nodded his head. Okay, replied the green-haired man with a smile and ease, causing Momo to be touched by his remarkable innocence of what he was about to do. I'm going to need you to lie down and close your eyes, too, please, Momo asked the boy kindly as he climbed into his bed. Sure, Momo-chan, whatever you order, replied the green-haired man with a sweet smile, and then lay down well on the bed to close his eyes. Then Momo settled on him to slowly put some honey on his lips, causing them to take on a provocative and desirable glow in her eyes. 
Then she set the honey aside so that it wouldn't bother and breathe calmly to herself. Please don't remember any of this, Momo said quietly, looking up at the ceiling, asking some divine force that the green-haired man would have no memory of what was about to happen. I lower my head nervously to fix on my target, Izuku-kun's lips. I feel my heart pounding and my cheeks burning causing a strong blush while as I get closer being that warm feeling inside me gets stirred. They look so desirable and provocative that I don't think I can control myself much. I must keep my sanity and refrain from advancing beyond the challenge. I can't give your rock a chan the satisfaction of comparing me to Mina. I shyly stick out my tongue shortening the centimeters that separate us to finally make contact. My tongue collides with the soft surface of her lips managing to feel the sweet taste of honey on them. I delicately begin to move my tongue gently in circles delighting in the texture of her flesh and the sweetness on my tongue. In addition to her softness warmth that only makes my mind sore trying to maintain control over my desires. I can't let myself be carried away by what I really want. Q I want to kiss him. See of course it's not the first time I've thought about it. Once in a while when I'm next to him I've noticed his mouth and I've been entranced watching it while he speaks to me without suspecting that I'm not listening to him because I'm so absorbed in my thoughts. There are also times when I'm in my bed looking at the ceiling and I get to imagine how it would feel to kiss him. I deceived myself by telling myself that it was pure curiosity but now I can accept that all that was because I am in love with him. And that's why I want to kiss him so much. If just the touch of his lips on my tongue makes me go crazy, then I can't imagine how good a genuine kiss between the two of us would feel. A kiss where we can both express our love for each other without problems. A kiss like in romance movies where only the two of us are left expressing their affection for each other without restriction. I want to experience that same with Izuku-kun, it's a shame that it can't be his first time since Suyu-chan came forward, but I still want to give him my first time. I want to give her my first kiss. I feel that little by little the honey on his lips is going to run out and that doesn't suit me at all. I would like to slow down but my body does the opposite. I run my tongue with more intensity over the warmth and softness of his flesh. I could get addicted to this and I just shudder to imagine what a real kiss with him would be like. It even sounds exciting the idea of a French kiss where his tongue and mine explore each other's mouths without shame and with the sole thought of loving each other. At some point I want to do that with you Izuku-kun, I'm going to strive to make it so. You look very happy, Momo-chan, Mina said with a sarcastic smile as she watched her friend with her arms crossed, causing her to stop and turn to look at them. Too much, I'd say, Kayouka added seriously, her hands on her waist, glaring angrily at her ally. And his time up, asked Momo, blushing in surprise as time flew by for her. There was never a time limit, you just had to wipe the honey from her lips, Momo-chan, Tsuyu replied with a frown and looking sternly at Momo, it was really impressive to see her with that expression. Yeto, and I, Momo tried to say blushing and nervously but the words did not reach her mind, then she looked at her friends with innocence. Oops, I forgot, she said with a small smile and slightly sticking to her head as if she were forgetful, the truth is the only thing she could think of doing at that moment. Iraka looked at him menacingly, as if he wanted to kill her with his eyes. How perverted, stealing such a kiss from Deku-kun is something worthy of Momo-chan, Yuraka remarked, arms folded imposingly and with a seriousness from beyond the grave. That doesn't count as a kiss, replied Momo, blushing and annoyed to face the brunette who only looked away. Of course, whatever you say, said Mina, amused by the denial of the black-haired woman who was about to claim again, but the green-haired boy catches her attention. That felt the same as what I did with Renita-chan and kayoyuka chan Izuku said with a blush on her cheeks and a cheerful smile putting her hands to her lips that were somewhat salivated by Momo's tongue. What? They all exclaimed except Kayoyuka in surprise, and then they all glared at the latter, who had blushed. Oh hey Midoriya, and don't tell lies, Kayoyuka said to Izuku with a nervous smile and the faint hope of being able to get out of the trouble she was in. It wasn't a lie, it was when we were coming here, said the green-haired man innocently, looking at him happily, causing the others to only increase their anger and bewilderment. Did you kiss him, Kayoyuka-chan? asked Momo, incredulous and speechless at how betrayed she felt in those moments. And it wasn't me, it was he who kissed me, replied Kayoyuka, excusing herself nervously, looking at her ally to clear up the misunderstanding. Then why did you want to hide it, Kayoyuka-chan? asked Mina with a mocking smile on her face. Shut up, Mina, shouted Kayoyuka to the haired woman, closing her eyes in embarrassment and then taking a few breaths to calm herself. Just forget it and let's get on with this, okay? She said with a slight blush on her cheeks and opening her eyes to see the others. You're right, Momo said, calming down and trusting Jiru's word that Izuku had kissed her. I'll challenge Toru-chan, said the black-haired woman calmly, fixing her gaze on her invisible friend. Please, don't let it be too bad, Toru asked Momo shyly and somewhat nervously. Then she turned to look at Izuku. Hey Izuku-kun, do you want something sweet? Momo asked the green-haired man sweetly, earning a nod from the boy. Yes, Izuku replied with enthusiasm and joy like a small child. Then Momo turned to look at her friend again. Cover your back with honey or candy so that Izuku-kun can wipe it with his mouth. Momo challenged him serenely and his cheeks flushed. And I haven't done you anything wrong, Momo-chan, Toru said, hoping to appeal to her friend's compassionate side so she wouldn't have to make that challenge. 
It's not like you have to do much, plus I have to take it out on someone. I'm sorry it has to be you, Momo said calmly and looking at her friend gently even though she didn't plan to take the challenge away. It's okay, please someone cover me, Tori replied embarrassed and blushing as she lay face down on the floor. I do, Mina offered quickly with a malevolent smile and then took the candy container and proceeded to throw it on her invisible friend's back. He I, it's cold, cried Toru in discomfort at the cold liquid running down his back. What he didn't expect was that the hairy woman would suddenly throw an exaggerated amount at him. That's too much, Mina. Yuraka shouted at him to reprimand him, as the honey covered Toru's back almost entirely. Oops, I think I went a little too far, Mina replied feigning awkwardness and sticking out her tongue playfully, which made her friends angry. Anyway, help yourself, Midoriya, added the hairy woman, moving away from Toru to make room for the green-haired man who approached attracted by the sweet smell of honey. Please be kind, Midoriya, Toru asked the green-haired man with embarrassment and shyness, knowing full well what he was capable of. Don't worry Toru-chan, I'm going to leave you very clean, he replied with a cheerful innocent smile and then went over to start licking the invisible girl's back. I shudder as I feel Midoriya's tongue touch my skin to begin to move it gently as if patiently painting a canvas with her tongue. It moves by pressing on different points in the area above my hip to begin to rise slowly causing my faint moan to escape from my lips. The sensation it makes me experience is amazing and I quickly feel my body begin to react to its subtle caresses, my cheeks feel them burning, my heart flutters and again an agonizing tingle in my crotch cries out to be attended. I can't quite understand how Midori is so skilled with his tongue, is it because of the alcohol? Anyway he is turning me on a lot just with the skillful touch of his warm tongue furrowing the most sensitive areas of my back. I start rubbing my thighs against each other in a vague attempt to try and quench the itch in my crotch, s c just. If only the others weren't here, I could be satisfied with it. It's falling off the sides, I'm going to have to clean up there too, I hear Midoriya talking in my ear, causing me to shudder even more and my fluids to begin to escape my intimacy. After that I feel his hot breath descend the sides of my waist to place his tongue in those areas that are very sensitive for me, causing me to have to cover my mouth to hide the moans that he caused me. It doesn't help that the honey descends on the sides because Midoriya begins to lick with more speed and intensity in those areas. Um, not over there, I whispered with my hands covering my mouth hiding my painful tone of voice from my friends, I can't let them hear how excited I am right now. Then I feel his tongue approach the top of my breasts and then descend to my left passing his tongue in a line towards my chest where I felt a thin line of honey. And not there, that's what my breasts are, I said with a broken voice and with some difficulty so that it is only Midoriya who hears me like that, I can't allow her to stimulate my breasts as well because at that moment she will really drive me crazy. But there's sweet Toru-chan there, and I want to taste it, she replied, breathing close to my armpit and then proceeding to lick the honey on the edges of my breasts that were pressed against the floor. I had to try harder to hide the moans that escaped from my lips and his tongue traced a detailed path again in the most suitable places to warm me up a lot, making me agonize from the incessant desire that begins to grow in me. I want to please myself, I want to please Midoriya who is making me feel so good, I want to be alone with him without worrying about others hearing me. I want Midoriya to be the only one who can hear me this way. You can stop now, Deku-kun, Yuraka asked the green-haired man with some nerves and cautiously so as not to be the next one subdued by him. The green-haired man, out of what they expected, walked away from Toru with joy and with a little honey on his lips and cheeks. Toru-chan tasted delicious, Izuku said with a wide cheerful smile and satisfied by the sweet taste of the invisible girl who was now breathing heavily to catch her breath. Let her rest for now, Midoriya-chan, Tsuyu asked the boy with a blush on her cheeks and softly because she was a little nervous. All right, little frog, the green-haired man accepted simply, then stood up with some difficulty and then walked over to Momo's bed to sit on the edge. Are you better yet, Toru-chan? Kayuka asked her friend as she crouched beside her. Yes, don't worry, I'm just a little tired, Toru replied with a silly smile that luckily her friends weren't able to see. After a couple of minutes they were all sitting in a circle again and Toru had already recovered from the challenge. Now I'm going to challenge Tsuyu-chan, Toru said calmly, and she tensed. Jijiro, Tsuyu said somewhat nervously. I dare you to lie on Midoriya to lick her nipples for four minutes. Toru challenged him calmly without seeing much of a problem, because the truth is that he thought it was a gentle challenge compared to his. Do you think you can do it, Tsuyu-chan? Asked Yuraka with feigned concern, for deep down she just wanted Tsuyu not to do that to her platonic love. Remember that you only have one life left, Kayuka said to the green-haired woman serenely while unconsciously having the same thoughts as the brunette. She was bothered by the idea of seeing Izuku being spoiled by another. Suyu surreptitiously shifted his gaze to Mina, who smiled broadly at him and nodded her head. Then the fraud girl turned to look at the others calmly. I give up. Please pass me a can, Jiro, Suyu said calmly, closing her eyes surprising her friends as she extended her hand to Mina who handed her a can that she quickly opened and drank suddenly. You accepted it very easily, Suyu-chan, Momo said, somewhat incredulous at the ease with which her green-haired friend gave up. I have to accept that I can't do it, Jiro, Suyu replied with a blush on her cheeks from the alcohol. 
The others had been left with a bad taste in their mouths at what had just happened. Some didn't see the point of it and others were suspicious, but Mina stood up, capturing everyone's attention. Well, well, then the challenge goes to me, said Mina, pointing to herself with a thumbs up accompanied by a wide cheerful smile. After that, the hairy woman began to walk up to Izuku to rest her knee between his legs while resting her hand on his chest to forcibly lay him on the bed. What are you going to do, Ashido-chan? asked Izuku, somewhat nervous and frightened by the predatory smile that the haired woman had. Stop with formalities, we've done a lot of things so far to call us by our last names, don't you think, Izuku-kun? said Mina in a flirtatious and seductive way as she settled down looking at the green-haired man with one hand making circles on his chest. Em you're scaring me a little, em Mina-san, said the boy, somewhat fearful because of how daring his friend was being. Mina smiled mischievously, bringing her mouth close to his right ear. It's still not enough, he said, then bite his ear coquettishly. And Mina Chan, Izuku said, looking vulnerable and submissive to do what she said. That's better, said Mina pleased and satisfied, and then bit her lower lip as she took a good look at her friend's elaborate body. Don't worry, I'm just going to make you feel very good, she added seductively and then lowered her face to Izuku's chest to begin her task. I begin to move my tongue in circles on the areola of her right nipple, feeling her body tighten in my touch. I slowly bring her closer to her nipple to start subduing him with my tongue without giving him any rest so that I can stimulate him more and make him feel good about the treatment I am giving him. With my other hand he starts to pinch his other nipple in a playful way and then lightly bites the one I am licking. Dia hurts a little, Midoriya tells me in a somewhat forced voice and in an adorable way, it's very nice that he looks submissive for just this, which encourages me more to play with him. You'll get over it, maybe later you'll do the same to me, I said flirtatiously, and then winked at him and continued with my little game. My tongue dances lasciviously savoring and playing with its buttons without worrying about being watched by others. Of course I wouldn't offer this game without being prepared to get my hands dirty. I don't plan on missing the opportunity to desecrate this adorable cinnamon roll even if my friends want to stop it. In the end, they can try all they want to stop me, but it's clear that I'll be the one to get hold of this perfect pure-hearted heartthrob in the end. Sure, I'll have to share half of it with Tsuyu now that we're allies, but it's a small price to pay for ensuring victory. In the end she is too shy to come up with anything and all that is left is for me to have fun with this provocative and sexy wolf in sheep's clothing. I've seen him throughout the game, he becomes a real sexual beast with the others but with me he only shows his submissive and vulnerable side. But I'm also going to receive the stimulation of his hands and his tongue when he finally decides to be rough with me. I'm going to do whatever it takes for this attractive green-haired man to dominate me as I've dreamed on hundreds of occasions. To please the fantasies I've been thinking about on the nights where I indulge myself imagining in thousands of different scenes where we both finally join our horns under pure carnal instinct to satiate our most primitive desires. I want him to be the one to take my first time and stay by my side forever, I must show the others that I am willing to meet any challenge to stay with him. Stop the now, Kayuka yelled at Mina angrily, hitting her on the head and knocking her out of her concentration. Ouch, that hurt Kayuka chan Mina said in pain, rubbing her head while a tear was on the edge of her eyes. Can't you see that your time has passed? Leave it alone, Kayuka reprimanded her perverted friend, as Mina had been ignoring their continuous wake-up calls that her time was up. Kayuka chan is right, if you continued you could have made it get out of control, Momo said seriously, seeing Mina who got off the green-haired man. And that would have been bad for her. Mina asked simply, not seeing the problem, which only made the others angrier. Just shut up and get this round over with, Kayuka said, getting over it, tired of tolerating Mina's attitude. How rude, replied Mina, a little hurt by her friend's words, but she cheered up anyway. But you're right, as you already know Suyu-chan doesn't have lives and therefore it's game over for her, she declared happily, causing everyone to turn to look at the green-haired woman who blushed instead in embarrassment. Therefore, according to the fifth commandment of the sacred game, the hairy woman continued in an authoritarian pose, but was interrupted by her friends. Fifth commandment, asked Kayuka in confusion. Sacred game, asked Momo, intrigued, raising an eyebrow. What the hell are you talking about, Mina-chan? Yuraka asked Mina, for none of them understood what the hell she was talking about. Leave me alone, I just want to make this dramatic, don't be boring, Mina replied in an adorable pout and then continued where she left off. As I said before, as the fifth commandment dictates now that Suyu chan has lost her three lives, she has to be subjected to a challenge and then expelled from the game, said the hairy woman and then smiled playfully. And I, who by coincidence am the administrator, have to choose that challenge, the hairy woman concluded, causing several to automatically feel sorry for Tsuyu. I feel sorry for Tsuyu chan Toru said, bowing his head. We wish you luck, Tsuyu chan Yuraka said to her green-haired friend, feeling sorry for her and looking at her comfortingly, causing Tsuyu to tense thinking that she would not like the challenge that her ally had prepared for her. Mina smiled scathingly as she pointed at Tsuyu. Your punishment will be to be locked in Momo-chan's closet with Izuku-kun for seven minutes without letting out any noise. The hairy woman challenged her with pride in herself for such a challenge, causing the others to be surprised. What, why in my closet? Asked Momo, nervous and blushing. Are you really just asking that? Kayuka asked her friend with a bead of sweat on her temple. 
and to make things more interesting, Mina said, again capturing the attention of the others who saw how he took a can of beer and opened it to get closer to Izuku. Drink this, Izuku-kun, the hairy woman asked with a kind smile, and the green-haired man nodded. Okay, he accepted simply, to everyone's surprise, and then proceeded to slowly drink the liquid. No, they all shouted except Suyu and Mina when they saw that the green-haired man would drink alcohol again and that couldn't mean anything good. They watched attentively as Izuku finished his drink to drop it on the floor while her cheeks again blushed heavily and the goofy smile showed on her face again. Whoa, Hick are my cute friends Hick, Izuku said somewhat dazed and with a little hiccup says he was more influenced by alcohol than before. Why the hell are you making him drink again? Momo asked Mina angrily and exasperated, as she could now be dangerous and savage again. I said to make things more interesting, didn't I? Replied Mina with an innocent and malevolent smile worthy of an evil being. Damn, you're really a demon, Kayoyuka said to the hairy woman with a frown. Stop flattering me, Kayoyuka-chan, you're making me blush, Mina replied, hugging herself with a slight blush on her cheeks and smiling mockingly. Don't worry girls, this was inevitable, Jiro, Tsuyu would say calmly to her friends to calm them down. Suyu chan Yuraka said, feeling sorry for her friend who would undoubtedly be in danger if she were left alone with Izuku in that state. Come with me, Midoriya-chan, Tsuyu said to Izuku with a bit of nervousness and taking him by the hand to take him to Momo's closet where they could perfectly fit both of them despite the black-haired woman's clothes. Hick Frog Chan, Izuku said, dazed and bowing his head from being dizzy from the alcohol. They both sat on the floor of the closet and Mina walked over to the sliding door. We'll open the door after seven minutes, until then remember to keep quiet, okay, said Mina to her friend and ally with a smile. It's all right, Mina Chan, Tsuyu replied nervously and blushing. And enjoy your sneak peek, Mina added and then winked at him in a flirtatious way to proceed to lock them in the closet, leaving them in the dark. Tsuyu shrank in place nervously, and feeling her heart beat fast as the green-haired man approached her to smell him. Sniff sniff, Renita Chan smells very good, Izuku said with a goofy smile and with his face very close to Tsuyu and then moved his hands to her hip taking her by surprise. In this way, using his natural strength, he placed her delicately on his lap so that she was resting on him, while one of his legs, which was raised, rubbed against the white panties of the frog girl. He nimbly began to kiss her neck as he placed both his hands on Tsuyu's buttocks and then squeezed them with desire. And don't put your hands there, Jiro, Tsuyu said nervously and in a panting voice at the rapid beating of her heart and the tingling that she began to feel strongly in her intimacy. That was pressed against his leg. The green-haired man began to play more with her ass, molding it and sinking his fingers into its soft texture, letting himself be carried away by his instincts that guided him step by step in the act of pleasing her in the best possible way. You're soft and my fingers sink in, you remind me of Miss Marshmallow, Izuku said with a goofy smile as he kissed her neck seductively, but Tsuyu moved away a little to look at him annoyed and serious. She placed her hands on Izuku's freckled cheeks to look him straight in the eye. You're not with Momo-chan, you're with me, Midoriya-chan, she would say with a vulnerable look and a blush on her cheeks. Just think of me, please, Tsuyu asked with affection and some embarrassment, causing the boy to smile with joy. Of course, yes Frog-chan, you're only for me, Izuku replied and then kissed Tsuyu's lips with a mixture of affection and passion that took her by surprise and she felt the need to focus on the kiss while Izuku resumed the movement of his hands on her soft and provocative ass. I feel really strange, his tongue shamelessly explores mine covering the moans he provokes by playing with my ass the way he is doing. I feel a continuous tingling in my intimacy that is constantly rubbing against Midoriya-chan's leg, in this way I also feel how that area gets wet and I begin to release my juices on the panties I am wearing. Um, and Midoriya-chan, I moaned as I was freed from the kiss, trying as much as possible not to let my friends hear me. I like your body, little frog chan. Midoriya-chan told me in a hoarse voice and smiling as she began to kiss my neck again while moving one of her hands towards a breast to start massaging it with a skill that only makes me go crazy with every passing second. I'm glad, Jiro, is the only thing I can say to her with an affectionate smile as I caress her green curls with my fingers with both hands. He continues to stimulate my breasts and ask causing faint moans to escape from my lips, which he silences by kissing me again with intensity and passion without giving me any respite. I'm getting so aroused and I feel something getting closer every second I'm exposed to this great amount of pleasure. More fluids escape from my intimacy, also wetting Midoriya-chan's leg, which is increasingly wild in its attack. Something closes in and my body shudders every second. His fingers sink into my ass moving my hips to rub my crotch harder against his leg, causing me to moan harder during the kiss I have with Midoriya-chan who uses his tongue to take control over me. That something comes closer and my body twists at the moment when my mind goes blank and I can't think clearly, my vision blurs and I feel like I'm about to go crazy because of Midoriya-chan's ability. Suyu's body twisted as she reached orgasm. Hmm. Suyu moaned loudly but luckily Izuku's lips managed to silence the sound as best they could. But still a large amount of fluids were expelled from the frog girl's intimacy and followed by that her body relaxed with several spasms and her mind went blank. The frog girl finally gave in and leaned tiredly and panting on Izuku's chest who abandoned her attack when she saw him in such an exhausted state. 
Seconds later, the closet door opened, revealing Mina. You were saved when the seven minutes were barely over, Sue, but what the heck? Mina asked, surprised to see the state in which her green-haired ally had ended up. Her hair was very disheveled, her gaze was focused nowhere cloudy, she was breathing heavily with hot breath, her tongue was sticking out. Her body was suffering from multiple spasms because of her recent orgasm, and a large amount of fluids came out of her panties that wet the green-haired man's leg, in addition to the fact that her dress was down revealing the white bra. The others, upon hearing Mina, approached the closet worriedly, only to be surprised and very red. Su Yu Chan, are you okay? Asked Tora to her green-haired friend who couldn't even modulate her words because of the state of tiredness she was in. Dideku Kun, P please stay calm, Yuraka asked his friend with some nervousness in the hope that he would not get out of control as he has done many times throughout the game. Of course, Yuraka Chan, Izuku replied calmly and with an innocent smile dedicated to the chestnut, causing her and the others to be surprised to see him more lucid. Are you okay? Momo asked him intriguedly. Just a little dizzy, why is this little frog Chan? Asked the green-haired man, looking worriedly at Suyu who was leaning on his chest with her tongue sticking out. Don't you remember anything? Kayuka asked him intriguedly. Everything is a blur, I just remember that my hands felt very good, he replied innocently looking at his hands and then smiling lustfully. I want to do it again, he said, and for some reason the other girl shuddered and blushed at the tone and manner in which he had said it. Mina smiled proudly. Well, in that case I'll offer myself to, she said, wanting to be the next victim of the green-haired man, but she is quickly interrupted by an arm of Kayoyuka in front of her. Don't even think about it, Kayoyuka said sharply and seriously, and the hairy woman had no choice but to resign herself. After that, Toru, Yuraka, and Kayuka grabbed Suyu and took her out of the closet while Izuku went out on her own. Please sit on the bed, Izuku-kun, Momo asked the green-haired man with a small kind smile accompanied by a small blush. Okay, he accepted with simplicity and innocence and then went to sit on the edge of the bed. Then the black-haired woman turned to look at the rest of her friends. Now it's time for the ten-minute break, so it'll be better for Tsuyu to rest in his room, Momo told them calmly to take command of the situation. I'll take her, leave her to me, Mina said to the rest of them and then took Suyu's arm around her neck so that they both left the room, Suyu being tired and barely consenting to put all her weight on her friend. In that case, now it's Toru-chan's turn and my take care of Deku-kun, Yuraka said seriously, looking at Momo as she wouldn't let him go with the green-haired man again. I suppose it's the right thing to do, Momo replied, calmly closing her eyes, not wanting any conflict at that moment. Then she and Kayoyuka headed for the exit, and before leaving, Momo looked seriously at Yuraka. See you here in ten minutes, don't do anything strange, he said menacingly, then closed the door, leaving Yuraka and Toru alone with the green-haired man. As if he was capable of doing something to Deku-kun, Yuraka said irritated by Momo's reminder. It's not like he's going to be able to subdue Izuku who surpassed him in any physical aspect and could defend himself easily, although he had to admit that if it was the case he could do it to Izuku in his current state. Toru dropped his arms and sat down heavily on the bed. God, this round was too much. She exclaimed with some fatigue at the intensity of the round with the challenges and then the punishment of Tsuyu. I think so, but at least Tsuyu-chan won't be forced to do any more challenges, Yuraka said calmly and sitting down next to her friend. But I'm a little envious of him, Toru said to herself in a small whisper as she puffed out her cheeks, a notable part of whether she wanted to be in the frog girl's shoes. What did you say, Toru-chan? Yuraka asked his ally intriguingly, unable to hear what he said. And nothing. Anyway now there are only five of us left, Toru said with some nervousness to divert the conversation. It's true, there's less time left for us to save Deku-kun, replied the chestnut with a warm and affectionate smile looking at the ground while he put a hand to his heart. There was little left to accomplish his goal. Save me from what? Asked the aforementioned with adorable curiosity, catching the attention of both of them, who for a moment did not know that he was right next to them. Nothing you have to worry about, just leave it to us, Yuraka replied with a cute, trustworthy smile and a flushed cheek as she gave a thumbs up. Do you mind if I get some sleep? I'm a little tired, said the green-haired man with a small smile and a little drowsy as he rubbed his eye, causing both girls to be moved to see him. Of course, Midoriya, rest as much as you like, Toru said affectionately to Izuku and he smiled and then settled into the center of the bed. I love you girls, good night, Izuku told them with a sweet smile before falling asleep in Morpheus' arms, not realizing that his words resonated strongly with both girls who blushed and felt their hearts in a fist at such simple words. After that, they both fell silent, watching as Izuku slept peacefully with a peaceful face. And what do you want to do now, Yuraka-chan? Toru asked her friend to try to make conversation. I'd like us to talk about something suspicious I've noticed, Yuraka replied earnestly as she turned to look at her friend. And what is it? Asked the invisible girl intrigued. Don't you think Tsuyu chan accepted surrender too simply? Said Yuraka with a theory in mind. In Kayoyuka's room, which Tsuyu chan purposely surrendered. Asked Kayoyuka, curious at Momo's recent opinion as they sat on her bed. Momo nodded calmly, hugging Izuku's matrioska. It's just a small guess of mine, but it looks like he turned to look at Mina before surrendering voluntarily, the black-haired woman said thoughtfully, remembering that moment. So you say it was planned? Asked the black-haired woman, interested in what it might mean if her friend was right. 
Maybe, I don't know what she's looking for by giving up, but whatever Mina has, has to do with it, Momo said calmly, pointing all her suspicions at her hairy friend. I may have convinced him to quit the game, Kayuka said with a slight idea. Let's hope it's that and nothing else, Momo replied calmly, looking away. Anyway, there are five of us now and the next one will be the seventh round. We have to be tougher in the challenges if we want Mina and your Rocket chan to give up. He added as he put a hand to his chin in a thoughtful and analytical way seeing the strategies they could use. At that moment an idea came to Kayoyuka's mind, and she smiled sharply. I think I have a way for Mina-chan to lose her first life, she said, catching Momo's attention, who smiled knowingly. You have my attention, Kayoyuka, she said, with the impression that the next round they would have something to act against Mina. In Mina's room. You did a great job, Tsuyu chan You really won't regret it, Mina said excitedly to her green-haired friend who was sitting on her bed hugging her legs as she turned her back to him in embarrassment as she remembered what she did to Izuku. I'm sure you enjoyed Midoriya. She even made you orgasm, added the haired woman mischievously, approaching Tsuyu to give her a few playful nudges on the back. T, please let's not talk about it anymore, Mina-chan, Jiro. Tsuyu asked blushing and burying her face shyly between her legs in the face of the embarrassment she felt when she had very clear the memory of what she had just done with her green-haired friend. Her mind simply did not process what happened. As you wish, but you know what you should do now, don't you? Said Mina to her ally with a sideways smile. Tsuyu, without looking at him, nodded. Yes, that way the others will give up until we finally win Midoriya-chan, right? She said a little nervously, remembering Mina's plan to win. Mina smiled analytically and calmly. Exactly, everything will go according to plan and the others will fall one by one, she said as if it were an infallible master plan. The angel and demon duo will end up with the perfect green-haired hero. He added as he smiled broadly, putting both hands on Suyu's shoulders to shake her with emotion. Jijiro, said Suyu, agitated by being shaken so abruptly by her hairy friend and ally. Chapter 8, A Small Detour At this time Mina and Suyu were entering Momo's room to continue the game since the time of rest had ended. But when they entered they found Yuraka and Toru around the sleeping Izuku and were turning their backs on the newcomers who were intrigued by what their friends were doing. Now it's my turn, Toru said to the brunette excitedly, then pressed one of the boy's cheeks to keep his finger there for a few seconds. Pop, she said as she pulled her finger apart, causing the green-haired man to fidget and try to hold her finger like a little baby. How adorable, exclaimed Yuraka and Toru, shrieking excitedly at how adorable Izuku looked as he was still sleeping. What are you doing, Jiro? Suyu asked her friends curiously, catching the attention of these two who turned to look at them. Oh hello girls, we were playing with Deku-kun, Yuraka replied with a smile greeting her friends who were intrigued by what she said. How? asked Mina intriguingly, raising an eyebrow. Come closer and look, Toru said to Mina and Suyu, who came to the bed to see what they meant. It's simple, we just hold a finger on his cheeks for a few seconds, Yuraka explained while both she and Toru touched the freckled cheeks of the green-haired man with their index fingers. And when we take it off, added the chestnut at the moment when they both pushed their fingers away, causing the boy to look uncomfortable and with gentle movements of his hands try to find the fingers failing in the attempt. Ah, that's cute, Mina shrieked with her hands on her chest and a blush on her cheeks while next to her Tsuyu covered her face with her hands while a little smoke came out of her ears. Of course, said Tor happily and looking at the hairy woman who nodded her head quickly. Midoriya-chan is very tender when he's asleep, Tsuyu said with some shyness, removing his hands from his face to see how the boy was still peacefully asleep in his place. What are you doing? Momo asked them all earnestly from the entrance as both she and Kayuka entered the room, catching the attention of the others who turned to look at them. What are they doing to Midoriya? asked Kaiwuka just as seriously, as she was uneasy at the thought that they were doing something to the green-haired man. Wow, what a way to kill the atmosphere, Mina said with a somewhat nervous smile as the two girls entered the room. Anyway, forget that and let's choose our next outfits. The hairy woman exclaimed excitedly to her friends as she took the box with the names of the costumes to extend it to the others. They all looked at each other intensely, Toru looked at Yuraka who felt with a determined gaze. Kayuka and Momo interspersed knowing glances to both nod their heads, Tsuyu glanced sideways at Mina who smiled happily and then gave her a little playful wink. Then a magical transition occurs a few minutes later in time where we are placed with the girls who had already changed into the outfits they had to wear in this round. This costume does seem more decent to me than the previous ones, Momo said with a small smile inspecting herself as she fixed the glasses she was wearing. She is dressed as a teacher, wearing a brown office skirt to below the knees, a simple white button-down shirt rolled up at the elbows and unbuttoned at the top revealing part of the neckline of the black-haired woman who was wearing a black bra. She also has black heels, reading glasses and has her hair pulled back in her usual ponytail. Without a doubt, her figure stands out perfectly, giving it a very seductive air. 
You're right, I like this one better that doesn't reveal so much skin, Kayuka commented calmly seeing Momo who nodded her head being both comfortable with their new outfits. Kayuka on the other hand was dressed as an office secretary, wearing a business skirt down to the knees, black mayhems down to the skirt, black heels. She also wore a white shirt and over top a dark jacket. The subtlety of her movements and the slender figure of her legs and hips gives a sexy touch to her appearance. Okay, this one is more normal, but it's still embarrassing to wear, Yuraka said somewhat embarrassed as she pressed her hands into the skirt she was wearing. Yuraka wore a Sailor Sailor Fuku school uniform with a primarily black and red ensemble, which consisted of a black skirt above the knees, a black shirt with a loose red tie revealing part of her cleavage, black stockings up to her calves, and finally her hair was arranged in a braid leaving the strands still on the sides of her face. Oh, I gotta repeat one, said Mina, disappointed that she got the mechanic suit that Yuraka used a few rounds ago. Me too, but I think this nurse's outfit is cute, Toru said cheerfully, inspecting herself wearing the nurse's outfit that Kayoyuka had worn long ago. Since I don't play anymore, I'll stick with the angel one, Jiro, Tsuyu said calmly and with a finger on her chin looking at her friends. Speaking of which, Tsuyu-chan, now that you're free, shouldn't you go to sleep? Kayuka asked her green-haired friend curiously, causing the frog to tense up a bit. That's true, you're no longer obliged to stay and see what happens, Momo said calmly, turning to see Tsuyu who was starting to get nervous at the attention of all her friends. Well, I really do, Tsuyu said, playing with her fingers and a little nervously, trying to give a valid excuse to stay, mainly because she had to make sure she went through with the plan Mina had formulated. After that, Mina stands next to Tsuyu to place a hand on his shoulder. Leave her alone. If she wants to see perverted scenes, then I say leave her. We shouldn't criticize Tsuyu-chan's tastes, the haired woman said to the others with a smile, causing Tsuyu to blush a lot. Of course not. Tsuyu complained to Mina with some anger and embarrassment, causing Mina to smile in amusement. I just thought that it's still a girl's night out and that I'd feel lonely without my friends, Jiro. She added more calmly and looking with some shyness at the others, who were moved by her words. Oh, you really are a Tsuyu-chan little angel, exclaimed Toru moved and joyfully, approaching Tsuyu to hug him without really suspecting that Tsuyu's intentions were not those. Then Mina took a few steps forward to take the floor. Anyway, it's time for us to start the seventh round of this beautiful game, and since I was the last one to be challenged, it's up to me to choose, she said with a proud smile and crossed arms and then pointed at Toru. Therefore I choose Toru-chan, exclaimed the hairy woman, causing the invisible girl to break away from the embrace with some trepidation. I dare you to pass three chocolate balls to Midoriya's mouth through a kiss one by one, Mina challenged, causing surprise in some of those present. Kui, exclaimed Yuraka and Toru surprised and blushing at the challenge that Mina had given, while Momo and Kayoyuka watched everything calmly while Tsuyu seemed to expect something. Momo hugged Izuku's doll a little more as she sharpened her eyes at Mina's challenge. She thought seriously, watching in detail how the situation would unfold. And and I can't do that with Midoriya, that's too much for my first kiss, complained Toru very nervously and blushing, trying to make Mina understand that she should only smile maliciously. Change the challenge to something else, that's too much, exclaimed Yuraka with some annoyance as she did not want her ally to touch the green-haired man's lips. Kayuka thought, closing her eyes simply and crossing her arms, knowing the answer Mina would give to the two of them. It's either that or lose a little life, you choose Toru-chan, Mina replied smugly and with a certain chilling wickedness that made Toru bow his head mentally debating what he should do. At that, Tsuyu approaches her friend to place a hand on her shoulder, capturing her attention. Jiro, I shouldn't say this, P, but I think the most correct thing to do in this case would be to surrender Toru-chan, she recommended with some shyness, causing both Yuraka and Toru to be shocked. Why do you say that, Tsuyu-chan? Toru asked her friend, somewhat hesitant and intrigued by what she would say. Well, you should consider that you'll remember that as your first kiss forever, Jiro. The frog girl replied with a slight blush on her cheeks and looking in another direction, causing Toru to become more nervous inwardly and her mind to make a mess. Yuraka was internally debating what she should do, because on the one hand she could support her friend to fulfill the challenge, but that would lead to her kissing Izuku, so the other option of letting her lose a life sounded more tempting. After a minute of thinking about it, Toru sighed in defeat, bowing her head. What a bummer, just pass me the can, Toru said to Mina with an air of defeat around him, causing Mina to smile, pleased at the effectiveness of his plan. After that, Mina handed a beer to Toru, who opened it and then proceeded to drink from it all at once until she finished it and then sighed as soon as she assimilated the bitter taste of the drink in her throat. Yuraka placed a hand on her ally's shoulder to catch her attention. Don't worry Toru-chan, I understand you couldn't do it, the brunette said kindly and understandingly, causing Toru to rejoice at the support he received from his friend and ally. Kayuka thought, sharpening her gaze seriously and then looking relaxed. Personally, I don't think that was as difficult a challenge as the rest, Kayuka said with her arms crossed and calmly, capturing the attention of the rest of her friends. But what do you say, that was certainly hard for any girl to do, Yuraka said to her friend, not understanding how she agreed to such a challenge. Well, I don't see a big deal, it's the truth, Kayuka said simply, shrugging her shoulders calmly, causing Mina to smile sarcastically. Oh, it looks like we have a brave one here, Mina said with a certain malice in her tone as she looked at Kayuka. 
Momo thought in his mind as he saw how his ally achieved his goal. Well, then the challenge passes to you, Kayuka chan Prove that you can do it, Mina said to the sexy secretary excitedly as she crossed her arms. Of course I can, Kayuka accepted without hesitation and calmly and then approached the bags of chocolates to take three small balls and then began to walk towards Momo's bed. What? Toru and Yuraka asked, shocked to see the simplicity with which their friend had accepted such a challenge. Suyu and Mina were also surprised but kept that to themselves. Kairuka reached the edge of the bed to sit down looking at Izuku. Please wake up Midoriya, I have a gift for you, she said to the boy with a small smile on her face as she shook him a little with one hand, causing the green-haired man to start waking up. Yowa, Izuku yawned sleepily and then stood up a little while rubbing his eye. Kairuka chan he asked, a little disoriented, seeing the girl in front of him who nodded her head. I've got something for you, Midoriya, some chocolates, Kayuka said with kindness in her tone as she showed the green-haired man the three chocolate balls that were in the palm of one of his hands. Chocolates, are you going to share with me? Asked the boy, smiling innocently and evidently attracted by the idea of the sweet. Yes, you just have to keep your eyes closed and I'm going to put them in your mouth, understand. Jiru said to the green-haired man with a certain flirtatious air and then poked his nose with a finger, causing Yuraka, Toru, Tsuyu and Mina to get a little jealous of his action. Izuku, on the other hand, smiled happily. Very well, he trusted Kayuka chan He accepted without problems, causing Kayuka to be moved and blush a little at how adorable the boy turned out to be. I watch as he calmly closes his eyes, completely oblivious to the nerves I'm feeling inside me. My cheeks soften slightly because of my embarrassment and I turn to look at the palm of my hand where the chocolate balls are that I must deposit in his mouth. The mere thought makes my heart flutter harder. Anyway, I take a breath calming down a bit and then take a ball to put in my mouth without chewing it and then I turn to Midoriya to mentalize myself for what I'm about to do. I bring my face closer to him and close my eyes until our lips meet in a kiss, my heart beats hard and my brain becomes overloaded with thoughts while I savor a little of his soft and warm lips. I subtly use my tongue to push him to open his mouth, which he accepts also using his tongue that comes into contact with mine causing my sanity to begin to be jeopardized. But I still focus on my target and transfer the chocolate ball to his mouth and then slowly separate myself from the kiss. MMM, delicious, he says without opening his eyes and tasting the chocolate I just gave him. He looks happy about it and I don't know if it's partly due to the fact that I had to kiss him. And now comes the second one, Midoriya, I say somewhat embarrassed, placing another chocolate in my mouth and then putting a hand on his cheek to get closer to him again to join us again in a kiss. I repeat the same process as before savoring his lips while slowly passing the chocolate to his mouth. Once ready I focus on moving away but his hands rest on my cheeks to keep me attached to him without barely giving me time to breathe. Could it be that he doesn't want me to be separated? And it can't be that, he's still under the influence of alcohol and it may be due to any other reason, but... Even so, he makes me happy. Anyway, with a little effort I separate myself from him to observe how he tastes the chocolate. Do you like it? I ask him with some embarrassment and my cheeks flushed at the strange sensation so strong that I feel inside me. He in response nods his head without opening his eyes and makes me feel satisfied with myself. I place the last ball of chocolate in my mouth and then subtly approach it to bring our lips together for the last time, focusing as much as possible on enjoying the sensations it makes me experience. I feel the warmth of his mouth against mine and the pounding of my heart rumbles in my ears, and I'm not so distracted that I don't notice what I feel at this point. I wish I didn't feel what I feel, I didn't ask to feel it, but in the end it's something I couldn't help and before I know it I'm already enjoying this show of affection with Midori a lot. I'm in love with him. I would like to be this way forever, without having to compete with the others to get him as a prize. He doesn't deserve that. I wish that things could just be normal. That I could get close to him without fear of others intervening or in the opinion that Momo is going to have. Surely she has feelings for him too. Anyway it's too late for me to back down. Both she and I must prevent the others from winning. I do this for him. I walk away from the kiss as I fight with myself not to kiss him again. And that's all of them, Kayuka tells him, catching his breath after the long kiss we had and he, in turn, finishes eating the chocolate I gave him. PHM, I want more, he said, opening his eyes in an adorable pout and puffing out his cheeks a little, causing me some amusement and I smiled at him amused. Then I subtly approached his ear with a faint smile on my face. Maybe later, I said seriously, I certainly can't think about leaving him after going through this, I plan to make him mine. Kayuka stood up with her eyes fixed on her friends. See, that was nothing, Kayuka said, returning to her relaxed and collected demeanor, crossing her arms under her breasts. Though Kayuka chan I have a renewed respect for you for that. I hope I have to do the same soon, Mina said to Jiru with a sideways smile as she subtly applauded him with some admiration. You'd like to, Kayuka whispered to herself with a wicked smile, then pointed at Yuraka. I dare you, Yuraka chan she added with a frown, pointing to the chestnut, which was a little startled and then blushed. A go ahead, Yuraka answered, hugging herself with some embarrassment and hoping for an easy challenge. It's a simple challenge, you just have to kiss Midori with an ice cube in your mouth and then both melt it with your tongues. Kayuka challenged with a small smile on her face while the others except for Momo were surprised. 
Are you feeling good, Kayuka chan It looks like you're behaving just like Mina-chan, Jiro, Tsuyu said somewhat nervously when she saw the intensity her friend was having now. I have to agree with Tsuyu-chan, I never expected you to give a challenge like that, said Mina smiling with some nervousness looking at Kayoyuka, not even she would have thought of such an idea for a challenge. I still don't hear your answer, you're Raka-chan, Kayoyuka said, her gaze fixed on the chestnut that was blushing and noticeably affected by the challenge. And an I, Yedo, said Yuraka indecisively and in a complex mental debate about what she should do, something that was more than noticeable for the others but specifically for Mina who looked sideways at Tsuyu. Mina said to her ally with her eyes, a sign that was understood by the green-haired woman who nodded her head and then slowly approached Yuraka. You know Yuraka chan I've heard that someone after being drunk starts remembering the things he did, Jiro, the frog girl commented calmly, causing Yuraka to tense up. I'm only saying that because I don't think you want to ruin the friendship you have with him, Jiro, Suyu added in a very subtle passive-aggressive tone, putting tension into the chestnut that put its hands to its head. Yuraka thought somewhat sad and defeated at the end and then let out a sigh and let her shoulders drop. I give up, I can't do that with Deku-kun, she said as she lowered her head and held out her hand to Kairuka, who calmly handed her the can of beer that the chestnut drank suddenly. Then passed the challenge on to me, Kairuka chan asked Mina excitedly, raising her hand asking to be next, being internally satisfied with how her plan was going perfectly. Jiru, on the other hand, smiled calmly. I don't think so, the challenge goes to Momo-chan, she declared as she pointed to her ally who remained calm and closed her eyes. I agree to do it, Momo accepted calmly and then approached Kayoyuka to give her Izuku's matryoshka to take care of. What? exclaimed Yuraka and Mina, surprised by the ease with which the black-haired woman accepted the challenge of Kayoyuka, who they presumed to be their ally. Momo turned to look at them with her hands on her waist. That's how you heard it, I can't afford to lose at this point, she declared seriously, looking at both of them who could perceive a certain hostility in her tone despite the fact that she was stoic. After that, the sexy teacher Momo took an ice cube from the beer crate and then went to her bed where Izuku was currently sitting looking at the ceiling, until he noticed that the redhead was approaching him. Are you going to give me chocolate too, Momo-chan? Izuku asked Momo curiously and tilting his head slightly to the side. It's a little different than that, I'm going to need you to copy what I'm going to do, okay, Izuku-kun, said Momo with a slight smile and a faint blush on her cheeks as she sat next to the boy who looked a little strange. I don't understand very well, but okay, count me in Momo-chan, Izuku replied with a wide cheerful and innocent smile that touched Momo. Close your eyes, she asked him kindly, and he obeyed without any problems. I stay for a few seconds appreciating his face, his freckles, his slight blush from alcohol but above all his subtle features that are more noticeable when I am more focused on noticing them. My heart race is causing my beats to ring in my ears and I feel my cheeks burn with fury at the mere thought of what I'm about to do with it. Technically this doesn't count as a kiss, right, so there's no problem. I place the cold ice cube in my mouth being able to feel how it contrasts with the temperature of my tongue and palate. Anyway I turn to Izuku and place my two hands on his freckled cheeks and then I slowly approach him in which I close my eyes ready to focus all my senses on the experience we are about to experience. I get closer and closer, feeling his breath on my face and finally join my lips to his in a shy contact. I begin to inexpertly use my tongue to try to force him to do the same, and to my surprise he reacts instantly to join his tongue to mine to begin to dominate me completely with no choice but to follow his will. Without asking permission, he takes possession of my mouth and uses his hot tongue to rub it against mine and consequently come into contact with the ice that is slowly beginning to melt in my mouth. Um, that embarrassing sound is drowned out by our encounter as the intensity builds and I instinctively wrap my arms around his neck to go even deeper into what we're doing. I'm completely his right now, no matter which way I might think of it. I can't find any other way to describe what's happening. It's driving me completely crazy and addicted to this strange feeling that only he makes me experience. I truly love him. I say that without hesitation for a single second and I'm more than determined to make him feel the same way about me once this stupid game is over. Our tongues continue to battle each other passionately while the ice is about to melt completely, which is bad for me as it would mean the end of this show of love that I have with him, but the others don't have to know if the ice melted, they have no way of finding out, so... I can continue to love Izuku without any problems, he is everything to me. I think that's more than enough, Momo-chan, Toru says to her friend with some nervousness as she goes over to place a hand on the dark-haired woman's shoulder. However, Momo continued in her effort for a few more seconds, feigning ignorance until she felt how Toru's grip on her shoulder increased, causing her to resign herself to separate, and she did so with some subtlety and leaving a strand of saliva that connected her lips with those of the green hair. Thank you for obeying Izuku-kun, you can open your eyes now, Momo said to Izuku with a small smile and a little blushing as she fixed the reading glasses she was wearing. He, for his part, opened his eyes happily and tilted his head forward slightly. No problem Momo-chan, I like that, Izuku replied, completely oblivious to the weight of his words and the effect he had on all the girls in the place, most of whom were jealous of Momo who smiled warmly and affectionately at him. 
After that, they all settled in a circle again with their eyes fixed on the black-haired woman who had to be challenged. Mina folded her arms with a smile to herself. Now after that show it's my turn to be challenged, so I'm anxiously awaiting what you'll say, Momo-chan, she said, completely cheerful at the kind of perverted and risque challenge she might receive. Momo glanced sideways at Kayoyuka, who smiled sideways knowingly to nod her head. In that case, I dare you not to touch Izuku-kun again for the rest of the game, Momo challenged with a certain air of superiority as she saw the hairy woman who widened her eyes in surprise. What? Mina exclaimed, very surprised and a little startled. You heard it very well, you won't lay a finger on him again for the rest of the game. Momo declared with authority and a certain seriousness looking at her friend while the others were surprised by the challenge except for Kayoyuka who was only amused by seeing Mina's expression. That's not valid, exclaimed Mina, looking at the black-haired woman with some anger. Why not? asked Kayoyuka with folded arms, drawing attention to her. After all, there's no rule that forces you to come into contact with him in a challenge, so we can challenge you without any problems on the condition that you don't touch him, Jiru explained smugly and with a small proud smile that irritated Mina. Momo nodded calmly as she fixed her glasses. It's like Kayuka chan says, and in my opinion it's a difficult challenge, so it's valid at this point, it's simply completely acceptable as a challenge, Momo said with a withering look and an argument that Mina couldn't face. Kayuka tucked a strand of hair behind her ear and then smiled at the hairy woman with a wry smile. Now the most important thing, do you accept or not? She asked in a venomous tone imitating Mina, which left her with a chill down her spine. Just remember well how Momo-chan and I put our lips together with Midoriya's, wouldn't you like to experience that? He added in a suggestive and provocative tone to further corner Mina. Mina exclaimed in her alarmed mind and being overwhelmed by the alliance of the provocative master Momo and the sexy secretary Kayoyuka who seemed to radiate an aura of superiority. Flashback. Several minutes ago in Kayoyuka's room, the two girls were talking about their plan against Mina. Then let's go over the strategy, Kayoyuka said calmly, resting her hands on her bed. Momo nodded serenely as she hugged Izuku's doll. The first thing is to keep a low profile to draw Mina's attention to your Raka or Toru so that she challenges them and depending on what you think she will start with difficult challenges to take lives. Momo began with her eyes set on her friend. That's right, it's most likely that none of them will accept the challenge, so I'll attract Mina's attention so that she passes the challenge to me and I'll fulfill it. Kayoyuka continued with her eyes closed and crossing her arms. After that, you'll challenge the one who's left with something complicated to give up and pass the challenge on to me, Momo added, also closing her eyes seriously on how the plan would continue. Kayoyuka nodded and opened her eyes to see her ally. And that way you'll challenge Mina not to touch Midori again for the rest of the game, knowing her she'd rather lose that challenge than accept it, she said, smiling to herself knowing how predictable the hairy woman turned out to be. Momo smiled smugly and opened her eyes. The conclusion of the game will be the loss of the lives of the three of them, it is certainly a grandiose plan, she said, pleased with the detailed plan and the results it would bring. We just have to be cautious and we have to be as calm as possible, we have to give a good image so that they don't get suspicious, Juru said calmly. Whatever happens, we do this so that they lose, so there will be no grudges, okay? She asked, extending a hand to Momo since they would both make difficult challenges with the green-haired man. Of course, we're allies after all, Momo replied smiling kindly and then both of them shaking hands in order to establish their master plan to get Mina out of her comfort zone. End of flashback. Then what are you going to choose, Mina-chan? Momo asked Mina with an authoritative and demanding smile, causing the hairy woman to be forced to grumble with her tongue in annoyance. It's clear that I won't accept it, they finally managed to take my life with dirty tricks, Mina replied reluctantly and turning her head in another direction and then looking at them out of the corner of her eye. But I'm not going to let you do that challenge again, from now on you can handle them better. She exclaimed with some suspicion towards her friends who were only calm. Then, just as several had been waiting from the beginning, Mina took a can of beer to open it and then proceeded to drink its contents, losing her first life in the process. This is absurd. Three of us have lost lives in the same round, Yuraka said frustrated, bowing her head at the thought that her team was at a clear disadvantage against the rest. Are you frustrated, Yuraka chan Is it because your team is closer to losing? Asked Momo proudly, hitting the nail on the head and causing Yuraka to widen her eyes in surprise. Team, how come you? The brunette was asking when she noticed how the red-haired woman had known that she had a team, but she was interrupted by Kayoyuka. It's more than obvious to see, you and Toru have been a team for rounds, Kayoyuka said simply and easily as she shrugged her shoulders causing both Toru and Yuraka to tense up when they were discovered. Oh hey girls, we're all a team against Mina, do you remember it? Toru said to Momo and Kayoyuka trying to dispel suspicion and not be discovered. Enough of this farce, Yuraka said earnestly, rising to his feet, capturing everyone's attention. Yes, Toru-chan and I are a team so that you don't beat Deku-kun either, what's wrong with that? Asked the chestnut crossing his arms imposingly as he glared at Momo and Kayoyuka who were not affected and also stood up. None, after all Momo-chan and I are a team so you don't win either, Kayoyuka replied with a small defiant smile as the intensity of the atmosphere rose to frightening proportions. Wow, I didn't expect them to declare it that way, said Mina, surprised by the hostility they showed each other. 
D should calm down girls, and there's no need to fight, Jiro, Suyu tried to tell her friends so that they would calm down and not say something they would regret, but then she notices a hand on her shoulder that belongs to her hairy ally. Let them follow Suyu chan let them attack each other, that way victory will be easier, Mina said to the frog girl with a malicious smile, causing Suyu to be somewhat hesitant but in the end decided not to do anything. Momo listened perfectly to what Mina had said, and then turned to glaze at her. We won't indulge you, she declared, and the others agreed. She's right, don't forget that the goal of all of us is that you don't get Deku-kun, Yuraka said earnestly and with a determined look directed at Mina as Toru also stood up. My enemy's enemy is my friend, that doesn't apply here, you are our enemies too, Kayuka said to Yuraka and Toru in a direct and crude way with signs of hostility. The same goes for you, we won't let you win. Toru replied to the opposing side and you could already see lightning and sparks impacting because of the looks that the three alliances were directing at each other, being more specific Yuraka, Momo and Mina who only smiled defiantly. Jijiro, Tsuyu said somewhat intimidated as she raised her hand to catch the attention of the others. Does anyone know where Midoriya-chan went? She asked, and automatically the tension disappeared completely and they all quickly turned to look at Momo's bed, which was completely dislodged. Yes, Kayuka said, stuttering a little with shock as she and the others watched in different parts of the room. Eh, said Momo incredulously and paralyzed, leaving a silence that in seconds they would all break with a. He's gone. They all exclaimed loudly and shocked, and then panicked. The door is locked, where the hell did he escape? Mina exclaimed in alarm to her friends as she stood up to see them. Out of the window, cried Toru, and they all turned to look at the window of the room, which was open, and the night breeze undulated Momo's red curtains. After that, they all went to the window to look for the green hair, who must be somewhere outside. Look over there, said Yuraka to the others forcefully as she pointed to a point in the sky. They all automatically looked in that direction and observed a silhouette receding into the air while leaving a trail of emerald rays so characteristic of the one for all that they all knew. He's on his way to the B-class dormitories, exclaimed Momo, shocked, seeing in the direction in which the green-haired man was jumping. We must stop him before they see him or something horrible will happen, Kayuka said to the others forcefully and with some nerves inside her at the trouble they got themselves into. Let's go now, they all exclaimed decisively, and then at great speed they left Momo's room in pursuit of the prize that had escaped them, in class 3B dormitories. Meanwhile, outside the B-class dormitories was Tetsu Tetsu quietly admiring the night sky while the gentle breezes and sound of nature gave him a sense of familiarity and comfort. This is what I needed, some fresh air, Tetsu Tetsu said with a smile to himself and his cheeks flushed a little mainly because he was drinking a little with his friends, after that he heard a sound coming from some nearby bushes. Hem, who is it? He asked, looking in that direction cautiously in case it was some animal or perhaps a student. To his surprise from the vegetation, Izuku comes out with a goofy smile and swaying a bit while waving at the B-class boy with a wave of his hand. Always, Izuku greeted calmly as he approached Tetsu Tetsu, who was intrigued and confused to see him there. Midoriya, what are you doing here at this hour? It's almost 11.30 p.m., Tetsu Tetsu asked the green-haired man curiously since it was honestly late for him to be out of his class's dormitories. Of course Tetsu Tetsu-kun, but I'm very thirsty, replied the green-haired man with a relaxed and somewhat hesitant tone without erasing the smile from his face. The truth is that having drunk a little of the ice cube made him want to drink something cold. Tetsu Tetsu smiled broadly with excitement as he slammed his chest with a fist. In that case you can join us. The boys and I are drinking a little in the common room. Do you want to join us? He offered his partner and friend in a friendly and cheerful way, receiving a nod from Izuku. Of course, I want to drink with you, Izuku replied with a thumbs up thinking he would drink water as he staggered a little making a small effort to keep his balance. That's very manly, exclaimed Tetsu Tetsu, excited at the response of the green-haired man who was usually shy and nervous. By the way, why are you almost naked? Asked the gray-haired man with a big smile, barely noticing the detail. It's comfortable, Izuku replied simply. Excellent, in that case I'll do it too, replied Tetsu Tetsu animatedly, then took off his shirt and pants and then threw them aside and also stayed in gray underpants. Now let's go inside Midoriya, the others will be glad you drink with us, he said to the green-haired man as he took his arm to help him walk inside the building where the voices and laughter of the B-class boys could be heard. You're a great friend, Tetsu Tetsu Kuan, Izuku said to the B-class boy with a thumbs up and a goofy smile before the two of them entered the room. About 15 minutes later we met the girls of class A who were already arriving at the dormitories of class 3B. They could now hear how attacks were being made from the building and different rumblings somewhat loud. The six girls ran to the front of the building, but a tremor caused them to temporarily lose their balance. What the hell is going on in there? Mina asked, surprised by what was happening inside the dormitories. Let's go in once and for all to stop Izuku-kun, said Momo to her friends once the shaking stopped and luckily she had left Izuku's matrioska in her room. They were all about to run to the entrance but something flew out of one of its walls. Liwa, exclaimed Toru, stepping aside to avoid the large object that left a large hole in the wall after being ejected from the building. The girls curiously approached the object that had left a trail of destruction on the ground, and when they get close enough, Momo creates a flashlight to reveal someone familiar to them. 
That's Shishida, Yuraka exclaimed in surprise to see the B-class student in his beast-like appearance completely motionless on the ground as his body returned to normal. There, Kayuka cautiously approaches the boy to take his wrist to check his pulse and also placed his jacks on his chest to hear his heartbeat. He's still alive, he's just unconscious, Jiru told his friends calmly and relieving them all and then they started the march inside the dormitories of Class B. In the common room of the building, they all enter and find the mess that was inside with all the male students who were defeated and injured in different areas of the place. There were noticeable craters on the walls and floor, multiple scales nailed to the ceiling. There were drill marks on the furniture and also on the floor having some depth. There were also solid onomatopoeias nailed to the walls and some were scattered around the place. In one corner was Honuki with half of his body sunk in the ground that he had softened with his quirk. There were also several signs of Bondo's glue around the room, implying that he was trying to catch something, or more specifically, someone. All of them were undoubtedly out of action and one of them was Monoma who was lying next to a crater on the ground with both arms exposed, showing a violet hue since he may have tried to use the one for all when copying it. The girls were distributed around the place confirming the condition of their classmates and also realized the complete disaster that Izuku had caused. Damn, we're too late, Kayuka said somewhat frustrated and clenching her fists. In small part she was a little sore in her feet from running for 15 minutes around campus with her secretary's heels on. They all looked defeated, I still can't believe how Deku-kun could have done this to them, Yuraka told her friends with some concern when she saw the terrible state of the place. She didn't know whether to say which place had been destroyed more, if the dormitories of class or B. Without a doubt if Monoma was conscious she would insist that B was the winner. I wonder where he could have gone, Jiro, Tsuyu said with a finger on his chin as he stared at the ceiling trying to think of the place where his crush might be. What the hell happened here? They all heard the kendo voice from the stairs and the girls from class watched as the girls from class B arrived at the scene horrified by what they saw while wearing their sleeping clothes. Kendo a simple yellow tank top and orange mini shorts. Pony a yellow top with a yellow jumpsuit of the same color. Yui wears a black shirt with a sporty mini short of the same color. Yanagi wore kawaii ghost pattern pajamas. Kinoko wore a full-length red pajamas with white dots similar to her hero outfit. Ibarra, on the other hand, wore a long white dress that went down to her ankles and had long sleeves, something very much in keeping with her purity. Setsuna, on the other hand, only wore a black top revealing her midriff and also wore a green sports mini short. Needless to say, they all looked incredibly attractive in their clothes and their developed bodies did not give much help to hide that fact. Their legs, their breasts, their waists and how somewhat disheveled they were, without a doubt all that was a landscape that any man and mind would pay to see. Yes, Minda is not categorized as a man according to a unanimous vote of the girls of both classes, he was just. Minda, girls, Toru said with his hands on his chest as he saw them arrive. What happened to them all? A villain. Setsuna asked the girls of class with some concern as she put herself on guard for a possible match. What are you doing here? Kinoko asked her class friends with some doubt and intrigue. Do you see? We, said Yuraka scratching her head somewhat embarrassed and blushing for what she would have to say to them. But out of nowhere Mina places a hand in front of her catching the attention of the others who saw how she gave them a message with her eyes. Don't tell them anything about the game was the message that Mina gave them and they all agree. It's not like they could justice that they were doing perverted things with the green-haired man to end up staying with him. Some things were better kept hidden. Momo calmly cleared her throat to take a few steps forward and take the floor. I'll explain it quickly, it turns out that the boys in our class got Izuku-kun drunk and that caused him to lose control and chase them away. Now it turns out that he escaped from our dormitories to here and apparently the same result was carried out, Momo explained to the girls in class B who were somewhat dubious about that explanation. Are you saying that Midoriya was the one who did all this? That's impossible. He's too good and pure to do that, Yui said to Momo calmly and closing her eyes knowing full well what the cute boy from class looked like. Uff, you have no idea Kodai, he really becomes a real beast, Tori replied in a more than convincing way as she was someone who had experienced for herself how wild the green-haired man could be. Anyway, it's like we told you and now Midoriya is free in the academy out of control because of the boys, Kayuka told the B-class girls with firmness and a certain seriousness to show that she was serious. Holy God, I hope the trouble ends for Midoriya and anyone who stands in his way, Ibarra prayed, clasping her hands in prayer as she closed her eyes. And shouldn't we tell some teacher? Asked Kanoko to all of them with some shyness and fear at the thought of what the kindly green-haired man from Klasa who had caught her attention could do. All the girls in Klasa tensed up at that question. And no, they all exclaimed, scaring the girls in Class B a little. If a teacher finds him in that state he will get a fine and the truth is that he just ended up drunk to protect us from a drink that the boys wanted us to drink. Deku-kun in theory is not to blame for everything he is doing said Yuraka to all of them with his hands held on his chest not wanting his best friend to get into trouble without actually being to blame for what happened. What's he doing? Okay, then let's have cool heads to face the main thing, Kendo said seriously and with his hands on his waist taking the floor. Why are you dressed that way? The president of class B asked the girls of class who stiffened at the question. 
Yes, I was wondering that too, but I thought it would be rude to say it, Yanagi said monotonously and calmly, also wondering why the girls were dressed that way, an angel, a mechanic, a nurse, a secretary, a teacher, and a middle school student. Yep, it certainly wasn't normal. He well, it's a complicated thing to explain, Toru said a little nervously, not knowing how to explain it to them without touching on the subject of the game. We were having a night of cosplay, exclaimed Mina excitedly and saying the first thing that came to her mind as an excuse. Cosplay night, asked Pony confused and she wasn't the only one since the other girls in class B were just as intrigued by what the hairy girl said. Mina had nothing in mind to answer and nudged Suyu to help her, to which the frog girl nods with some nervousness. Yes, we do it once a month, we do a giveaway for each of us to try on different outfits, Jiro, Tsuyu said trying to sound as convincing as possible, and apparently it worked since all the B-class girls had an image of her as someone sincere. Well, what you do shouldn't be my problem. Anyway the priority now is to find Midoriya who can be anywhere in the school, Kendo said crossing her arms seriously receiving a nod from everyone else. Hey this, they all heard a male voice coming from a dark corner and there they could all see how Kiwaro materialized from the darkness who was just as hurt as the rest of the men. Kiwaro kun cried Kanoko, worried about her friend, and then they all rushed to him to help him. Are you okay? Kendo asked Kiwaro with some concern at seeing him so hurt. What happened? Momo asked the B-class boy intrigued, wanting to know how it all ended so badly. Kiwaro complained a little about the pain and with some difficulty concentrated on answering. Hem Midoriya. Tetsu Tetsu brought him to drink with us, he said, having the full attention of the thirteen girls. F it was fun at first, but he... He started drinking all the alcohol we had. He continued to reminisce about that moment, then coughed a little. We tried to reassure him but... He had completely changed. That thing wasn't Midoriya, Kiwaro said, remembering the intimidating figure. That thing, asked Kanoko fearfully and with a certain chill, and she wasn't the only one in that state. Yes, that escaped anything I could see in an abyss of darkness. I just hope it doesn't kill them all, Kirwara replied with some difficulty, before coughing a little harder than before, remembering the way the creature had killed all the boys. Do you know where he went? Yanagi asked his friend curiously. He nodded. He's here. In the dormitories. He hasn't left here at any time, Kirwara replied causing everyone to feel a cold breeze on their necks causing them a frightening sense of fear. Do you say he's here? Asked Tora with noticeable fear in her tone as she hugged herself trying to feel protected. T. Tengen. Be careful. Was the last Kiwaro could say before he lost consciousness at the bewildered sight of the girls in both classes who had been left with a bad taste in their mouths. Is anyone else as scared as I am? Asked Kanoko openly as she looked at the others present. Me, replied Suyu, Toru and Ibarra, raising their hands, all evidently frightened by the sudden atmosphere of fear left by Kiwaro's words. Momo made an effort to stay calm and took the floor. Okay, we need to stay calm and work together to fix this problem, said the class of vice president, trying to take control of the situation. I agree, it's our duty to stop Midoriya before a teacher gets here, seconded the president of class B with her arms crossed in agreement with her black-haired friend. First things first, we must. Momo was going to say until out of nowhere a sudden cut of all the lights in the building interrupts him and causes some of them to scream in fright. A blackout. Yuraka asked alarmed, looking for her friends until Momo used the flashlight she created to illuminate the mist of darkness, giving more visibility to all those present who approached each other to see each other better. Kairuka peeked through the hole in the wall that Shishida had left to see outside. There's only no light in this building. In the other places there is, Jiru replied with some discomfort, noticing the lights coming from the lanterns or the other bedrooms. He turned off the power generator. Kendo asked, surprised and noticeably affected to hear that. Where's that? Mina asked the orange-haired woman curiously and with a nervous smile. Kendo turned to look at her with a tense smile and trembling a little. And I don't even know, he replied with noticeable discomfort growing inside him at the fear that was growing inside him. He knew the place much better than she did. So they're telling me we're in a building alone and in the dark with a runaway Midoriya, asked Ibarra, hugging herself with some trepidation as she looked at the other girls present. After that, a cold, whistling breeze entered the building through the hole in the wall, and the night sound gave a much spookier atmosphere to the Class B dormitories, which were completely dark. Yes, yes, replied all the others, each with a bad feeling that something bad was about to happen. Even the small thought of fleeing the place crossed their minds and didn't sound at all far-fetched. A little detour in the innocent game that led to the search for the missing and uncontrolled Izuku in the dark dormitories of Class 3B. It only remains to be seen how events will unfold for the girls of Class A who now had more help from the girls of Class B, but were nevertheless now in a territory where the green-eyed predator was in complete control. Will a different kind of of minigame. Chapter 9, Seek and Hunt. We met the 13 girls from the class who were in the destroyed common room of the dormitories of Class B, which at that time was without electricity. Not long ago, the power had gone out because of Izuku, who was somewhere in the compound, leaving the girls intimidated by the new environment that had formed. Oh okay, first of all we must calm down to put things in order, said Momo, trying to appear calm while with her flashlight she illuminated through the mist of darkness so that her friends could see her. See how do you want us to calm down in a situation like this? Asked Kanoko fearfully and frightened as she looked at the vice president of Class A. 
But it's no use being frightened, we must act, exclaimed Araka, plucking up the courage as much as possible to lessen the fear of the rest, which served to lower the tension to a certain extent. Okay, first of all we're going to need more flashlights since I don't plan to stay in the dark here, Setsuna said seriously and placing her hands on her waist as she looked at the rest who nodded in agreement with her. I'll take care of that, Momo replied decisively to proceed to create lanterns for everyone and a small lantern that she placed on the floor to illuminate the common room a little. Then they all turned on their flashlights to start looking in different directions to check the place and the boys of Class B who were still unconscious because of their battle with the missing and dangerous green hair. Now how should we continue? Yanagi asked the girls in class a calmly and neutrally, quickly getting used to the scary environment. Momo nodded. First things first, we must. She was about to say but is interrupted. I'll call the ghost hunters. They'll take care of Midoriya, exclaimed Pony with a tense smile catching the attention of the others who had beads of sweat on the back of their necks and didn't know whether to take what the blonde said seriously. Just because fear doesn't mean I'm a ghost, Tsunotori-san, Kayuka said calmly and closing her eyes and then sighing. After all, maybe Pony said that out of fear, and it was understandable, this wasn't a situation they should be in. Momo came to the same conclusion as her ally and decided to take the floor. Let's make this clear, are you all determined to help Izuku-kun? Asked Momo to all the girls in Class B with relative seriousness and firmness. Now with the recent power outage it's normal if they don't want to put themselves in a bad situation and decide not to look for Izuku. There, Tsuyu nods his head, catching everyone's attention. Well, I honestly don't think we should involve them in our class problems. Jiro, Tsuyu said dressed as an angel saying what she really thought, after all her friends in Class B didn't need to be compromised. It's true, at the end of the day this was caused by the boys and it's up to us to fix it. You don't have to risk it, Tora said to the girls of Class B in a kind and generous way to encourage them not to make an effort to look for the green hair. Mina nodded her head with her arms crossed at what her friends had said. Besides, it's not like they know Midoriya well enough to take a risk for him, says the haired woman, smiling relaxed and somewhat amused, since it's not possible that they would put themselves at risk for someone they hardly talk to. But to the surprise of her and the other girls in Class A, the girls in Class B had blushed slightly and were a little nervous even though the darkness helped hide their flushed cheeks a bit. Well, I really consider Midoriya to be a great friend and I want to help him, Kinoko said with some shyness as she squeezed her hands over her pajamas with a little embarrassment. I'd feel bad if I didn't help him after all he's done for me, Yui said with her calm face slightly blushing as she looked in another direction and held her arm. I think the same, and if he gets punished, I won't be able to tell him my opinion about the book he lent me, Yanagi said, keeping his expressionless face as he played with his fingers a little. Ibarra pulled his arms to his chest as he lowered his head slightly. He has helped me in many things besides supporting me in the botany club, it would be a despicable act not to give him my help, said the saint of class B with a little embarrassment. And I don't want Midoriya-san to be punished. He teaches me Japanese and tomorrow we were going to meet, Pony said a little nervously as she squeezed her fists over her yellow jumpsuit. Well, certain things happened and I'm willing to help you, Sitsuna said, crossing her arms with a small blush on her cheeks as she looked away in another direction. All the girls in class were experiencing a mixture of feelings, as a surprise since they didn't expect that Izuku was going to get along so well with the girls in class B to the point where they wanted to risk themselves to help him. But they were also jealous for the reason that other girls were somehow interested in the green hair. After all, their reactions were enough to reveal that. And you, Kendo, Momo asked her orange-haired friend with a stiff smile and trying to be nice, but still some jealousy came through. They all watched the Class B president playing with her fingers while shrugging her shoulders blushing. She became a little nervous about the question and tried to find the right words to answer. And I, I have a duty to help you as the representative of Class B. Now it's also our business as we have entered our dormitories. Kendo replied trying to appear as calm and confident as possible. But even that could not completely fool the rest as they could still see the blush on her cheeks. Mina thought between annoyed and amused, because although she was irritated by the superficial interest of the girls in Class B, it would be good for them to find Izuku successfully. Still, Momo cleared her throat to continue. Then with everything said and done, what we must clearly do is find him, find a way to calm him down without violence, and then take him back to our bedrooms, she explained as clearly and calmly as possible to put aside her jealousy. Kendo nodded earnestly at what he had said. I agree, for that you have to analyze the current situation, we don't have electricity, the boys won't be of help and Midori is a possible danger, she said, crossing her arms recapitulating the current situation. That's why in order to find him we have to divide into a group to cover more space in the search, Kendo added, looking at the other girls. Okay, does anyone have a better idea that isn't so cliché? Asked Mina openly, looking at the others. Excuse me, asked Kendo, a little offended by what the haired woman said, to which Mina shrugs her shoulders. Not to offend, but clearly everyone here has seen horror movies and if we split up it's more than clear that we'll be less safe, Mina clarified calmly looking at Kendo as she explained her point. And Mina is right, separating us is a way to make it easier for Midoriya to ambush us. Tora seconded somewhat nervously just imagining being alone in the dark corridors knowing that Izuku could be lurking. Setsuna placed a hand on Kendo's shoulder. 
It's not for nothing, Itsuka, but I agree with them. It's clear that the second mistake of a group of young people is to separate inside a dark building. The first mistake is to be inside in the first place, and we already made it, Setsuna said calmly, agreeing with Mina and Toru. She didn't want to be one of those characters who die to go down to the basement alone. Kayoyuka cleared her throat to speak. Well, there's no other way to do it, it's the most efficient way to find him. Besides that we are 13 girls in total. We could form three groups of three and two groups of two people, Kayoyuka proposed, crossing her arms seriously, to which she earns a nod from her ally. There, Momo arranges her glasses with authority. Yes, if we go individually we will be at a disadvantage, but if we are accompanied we will have more opportunities to calm him down once we find him, said the black-haired woman, sounding actually convincing in part thanks to wearing her teacher's outfit that gave her a more professional air. It's like they say, plus we can form the group so that the combination of the quirks can work against him, Yanagi says neutrally, earning a nod from Momo and Kayoyuka who agreed with her. Didn't you see what he did to the boys? Asked Kanoko with some incredulity as she pointed her flashlight at some of her male classmates who were injured and unconscious all over the place. Toru nodded his head and that was visible from the nurse's hat. It's more than clear that we in smaller numbers and separated are not going to have a chance, exclaimed Toru with a little anxiety since she certainly did not want to be the first victim of the green-haired man, although some part of her was curious to know in what way she would be his victim. With that attitude even less, Yui said calmly, looking at the invisible girl dressed as a nurse. In any case, we can't all go together. The best way will be for several groups to come and corner him without giving him any escape, Momo said calmly, convincing several who nodded with determined looks, including Yuraka who took the floor. We should stop talking and start forming the groups, time is money, exclaimed the chestnut confidently and plucking up the courage for everyone to take action. At times like this was when Deku gave courage to the others and she wanted to do the same to save him. Minutes after the conversation, they had all formed the groups with which they would look for Izuku in the dark room. The first is that of Momo, Kendo, and Kayoyuka who were together talking to each other. I have my creation. Kendo has his combat skills and his quirk to catch Izuku. And finally Kayoyuka-chan with his jacks can try to locate him, Momo said serenely seeing her two teammates who nodded determined in their goal of finding the boy. The second group consists of Ibarra, Setsuna, and Tsuyu, where Takage was playing around with Tsuyu's angel wings a bit. The green team, exclaimed Setsuna with a big excited smile identifying his team. Jiro, it may work because Shizaki-chan could immobilize him and Takage-chan can entertain Midoriya-chan with pieces of his body, Tsuyu said calmly, the slight blush on his cheeks from the alcohol that was already running out slightly. That didn't sound very good, Asui-san, Ibarra said to the frog girl by way of reproach for the way in which she could have misunderstood what she said. At that, Setsuna hugged herself with a flirtatious smile. Well, I wouldn't mind entertaining Midoriya with my body, said the green-haired woman with a slight blush on her cheeks, causing Ibarra's face to light up red. Please don't joke about it. That's a lustful thought, Ibarra said to her friend nervously and embarrassed at the fleeting image that flashed through her mind, which caused Setsuna to laugh amused at her reaction. I was just kidding. At least I can lighten the mood by joking a little, Setsuna said with a friendly smile to Ibarra as she kept to herself the scenario she had seen in her mind at times where she entertained Izuku in a not very saintly way. The third group is composed of Toru, Yanagi, and Yui, of whom the invisible girl ironically stood out for wearing her nurse outfit. I feel protected with you too, Toru said to the 2B class girls with relief in her tone. After all, she still remembered the battle between classes her freshman year. Well, our quirks as a whole are very useful for attack. I can enlarge objects and Ryaiko-chan throws them with her poltergeist, Yui said calmly while next to him Yanagi nodded his head. Either way, I hope we don't have to use them against Midoriya, Yanagi said monotonously, and the other two agreed with her, neither had the slightest intention of doing any harm to the green-haired boy. In the fourth group are Mina and Pony who seem to be taking it easier than the rest of the teams. We are well balanced, we can both attack from a distance and in close combat, Mina said with a big smile seeing the blonde since both were actually well matched for a fight, although in close quarters it was more complicated. Yes, we can run away with my horns, cried Pony, less frightened than before, and even a little excited that she would not be alone in the corridors. The last group is that of Yuraka and Kanoko, who were observing the interactions of the rest of the teams. I'm counting on you, Yuraka-san, Kanoko said to her companion with a somewhat nervous smile. After all, she couldn't really do anything in close combat against Izuku. Yuraka turned to look at Kanoko to give her a thumbs up. And don't worry Kamori-san, in close combat I might try to immobilize Deku-kun with my quirk, Yuraka said to Kinoko with a somewhat forced smile. After all she was also slightly scared but she must have been brave in those moments. Kinoko felt a little better about her partner's confidence and nodded her head. Then I can create mushrooms to lull him to sleep, said the chestnut with a more confident smile. They're the brown team, exclaimed Setsuna with a smile, pointing to both chestnuts, who smiled slightly with a few drops of sweat on their temples. Don't go naming names because of the color of your hair, Setsuna, Kendo said to her friend somewhat strictly, as she could be rude. But we need code names to communicate. It's essential, Setsuna replied with a simple shrug of her shoulders and then placed her hands on her waist as she looked at her president. 
I think the same as Takage Chan. Besides, it would be funny, said Mina amused and with her hands behind her back, causing Kendo to sigh tiredly. We can leave that absurd thing for later, for now we must plan how we are going to divide, Kendo said and then got serious and took an authoritarian stance looking at them all. The three of us are going to look around the second floor, the green team is going to look for the third, she said giving the directions but at a certain point she had to force herself to say the name of the team since it would be simpler than saying I bar Suyu and Setsuna, but she regretted it when she saw the face of satisfaction on Takage's face. Wow, what were you saying about code names? Setsuna asked Kendo in a playful and joking way, causing Kendo to frown and keep quiet to Setsuna's amusement. Momo cleared her throat to speak. Let's continue. The group of Toru, Kodai and Yanagi will search the fourth floor while Pony and Mina will search the fifth floor, the black-haired woman said to the girls of both teams seriously. We'll be the acid ponies, said Mina to her blonde companion as she slammed her fist into the air. Let's do it, replied Pony just as excitedly, and then raised both her arms in the air. I suppose we can call ourselves the Invisible Wraiths, Yanagi said to Toru and Yui, who agreed and nodded. And where shall we look? Hinoko asked Momo curiously since they hadn't mentioned her or Yuraka. Kendo took a few steps forward, catching the attention of both chestnuts. You will search this floor and stand guard in case Midoriya wants to escape, the B-class president replied calmly and with a slight smile. It's a decent thing, that's fine with me, said Uraka, smiling relieved and calmer since it was unlikely that they would ever be attacked on the first floor where the men were still unconscious. Hinoko agreed with her friend that on the first floor they had more space and she could create mushrooms with more freedom to move around. Now the best thing will be for us to start looking, does each one have their own lanterns? Asked Momo to all of them and so the others nodded their heads, each one having their flashlights on. Does each group have its communicators? Asked Kayuka calmly, and the five respective girls in each group nodded as they looked at their walkie-talkie-like devices with which they would communicate. With all that said, I wish you all luck, remember that we must find him and calm him down, if possible do it without violence, said Momo in a serene and authoritarian way, earning the nods of the twelve girls and then they all went in the direction of the stairs except for Kinoko and Yuraka who kept the lantern. Alone, they fell into awkward silence as the breezes from outside blew in through the hole in the wall that Izuku had caused by ejecting Shishida from the building. Hey Yuraka, do you think Midoriya will ever hurt them? Kinoko asked her companion with a bit of concern for her friends, to which Yuraka shakes her head. No, Deku-kun would never hurt them or us, at least that's what I think, Yuraka replied with sincerity and a small smile as she looked at Kimori. You're right, I doubt he would do that, Kinoko said more relieved and holding her hands on her chest as she smiled. But he can do other things, whispered Yuraka with a stiff smile as he imagined the other possibility of what the drunken boy could do to them. What did you say? Asked Kinoko of the chestnut intriguingly, not being able to hear him well. And nothing. The best thing to do is to make sure that all the boys are okay. Yuraka replied evading the question to receive a nod from Kanoko, and then both of them began to check the status of the boys in Class B. Minutes later we met the green group on the third floor walking through the dark corridors while pointing their flashlights in different directions. Darkness prevailed despite the light coming through the windows. All this added to the silence that was only interrupted by the sound of their voices and their footsteps. Should we search the rooms? Jiro, Tsuyu asked curiously of Setsuna and Ibarra who were walking ahead of her. If one is open then yes, I doubt Midoriya would close a door when entering. Setsuna replied calmly as he stopped and turned to look over his shoulder at the frog girl. I pray that Midoriya hasn't destroyed belongings in the rooms. Ibarra prayed with her hands clasped in prayer as she closed her eyes, then turned to look at Tsuyu. I have a question, Asui-san, he said calmly, catching her attention. You can call me Tsuyu, Tsuyu said calmly, and the B-class saint nodded. Tsuyu-chan, what time did you find Midoriya in that state? Ibarra asked Tsuyu curiously, and Asui placed a finger on her chin thoughtfully. Well, it was about 8 p.m. and we didn't find him in the state he is in now. He was asleep, Jiro, Tsuyu replied being honest in that aspect since after all it was true. And did you also fight with the boys in your class? Setsuna asked Tsuyu, and Tsuyu nodded. Jiro, he left the common room very destroyed. He was asleep on a note from the boys who explained how they had drunk him. Asui replied calmly, causing Ibarra to be somewhat incredulous. So you left him there asleep in that drunken state without even covering him with a blanket. Asked Ibarra, clearly surprised because according to what they have been told they arrived at 8 o'clock and now it is almost 12 o'clock at night. So during that period of time the girls of class had let the poor boy sleep on the floor of the common room. Suyu became a little nervous when she saw that she couldn't answer truthfully, and she couldn't think of what to answer. Well, we didn't really leave him lying there on the floor, but, said Suyu until the sound of a door caught the attention of the three girls. SHH, did you hear that? Setsuna asked her two companions who nodded and shrugged a little in fear that Izuku was near. It came from there, she added, pointing to a corner with the light of her flashlight, and then the three of them began to walk cautiously, and with their guard up. When they reached the corner they turned left and walked a little and saw how one of the doors in the corridor was ajar and moved a little, assuming that it had been opened recently. 
They approached cautiously while pointing their flashlights at the plaque on the wall that identified who the room belonged to. There they could see the name of Yosu Weiss and the three of them interspersed glances to tell each other that they were ready to enter and without further ado, they opened the door and entered. They pointed their flashlights at the room in search of Izuku and went inside, a little intimidated by the bad vibes that the place gave in the absence of light despite being just an ordinary room. In the end, after a minute of inspecting the room, they didn't find the green-haired boy. Where is he? He must have come in here, said Setsuna, clearly intrigued, looking in different directions, as it was not possible that the door could have been opened from the inside unless Izuku had hidden himself in the room and decided to leave. He doesn't seem to have made a mess here. Maybe he's being stealthy, Jiro. Tsuyu commented thoughtfully as she observed how nothing seemed to be destroyed or messy. The truth is that Izuku never entered the place. D excuse me, look here, Ibarra said to his companions with a little nervousness as he pointed to a specific place on the wall with the light of the flashlight. It was a ventilation duct that was open and looked somewhat bruised. The ventilation, it's true that a person would fit in there, but I doubt if he could move freely, said Setsuna, doubtful if she really believed that the boy would be able to move through the ducts. Either way, we must tell the others, Jiro, Tsuyu said seriously, looking at her friend who stared at her for a few seconds until she covered her mouth to hold back her laughter. It's hard for me to take this seriously when I see you dressed like that, said Setsuna amused and trying not to laugh since after all Tsuyu was still dressed as an angel. If this were a movie it would definitely be a comedy or a parody of horror movies. Meanwhile on the second floor we met the group of Kendo, Kayuka and Momo who had just turned a corner to continue looking in different directions by shining their flashlights. So what they did was cover him with a blanket and take him to his room, right, said Kendo summarizing what both girls had told them about the way they acted when they found Izuku on the floor of the common room. Exactly, we couldn't leave him there in that state, Momo lied calmly as he continued walking and pointed straight ahead. And how did you find out that he had escaped? Kendo asked the two girls in costume curiously. Well, I heard it, it made a noise in his room and when we went to see he had already escaped through the window, Kayuka replied clearly telling a lie, but he said it in a way that was convincing to the orange-haired B-class. After that, the Kendo communicator began to play and the girl took it to bring it to her ear to listen to the transmission. What's wrong? Kendo asked calmly to hear Setsuna's voice on the other line. Don't call us the executive team, Setsuna-chan, Kendo said, frowning somewhat annoyed with her friend. No, you don't have to say change all the time, just speak normally, she said somewhat exasperated while Momo and Kayoyuka felt sorry for their friend, after all they had Mina on their side and understood the feeling. Do what you will, Kendo said, sighing wearily to hear what Setsuna had to say. What? Events? She exclaimed, surprised at what she heard. What's going on? Momo asked Kendo intrigued, as the girl cut off the communication to turn to look at them seriously. Apparently, Setsuna, Asui and Ibarra saw the vent in Yosu-kun's room open, so they assumed that maybe Midori is using them to move around the building. Kendo notified, with a little concern that this would turn out to be true, after all the ventilation ducts connected to all the rooms in the building. That sounds absurd, it's not like he's a monster from a horror movie, Kayuka said, reluctant to believe that Izuku would enter those narrow places like a predatory monster. We can't rule anything out, for now it's best to try to locate him with your quirk, Momo said to her ally and friend calmly and Jiru nodded accepting the request to the quirk. Kayuka approaches the surface and rests his ear on the wall while plugging his two jacks into the wall to begin concentrating on the sound waves that gave him a mental image of the bodies moving within the radius of his perceptual range. He visualized them, three figures moving on the upper floor and two figures sitting on a sofa on the first floor talking. The boys being unconscious did not make any sound with which to locate them but he was sure that they were still there. After a few more seconds, Kayuka stepped away from the wall to look at her team. Unfortunately I can't hear around the whole building, I only managed to locate the green team upstairs and below would be the boys next to the brown team, Jiru said identifying the teams by their nicknames when he saw it simpler. Then we must assume they're on the upper floors, Momo deduced, with her arms folded and thinking that Izuku might be on the fourth or fifth floor. We must warn you, Kendo said, but he stopped because he refused to say such ridiculous names. Come on, say it, we know it sounds absurd but it's a way to identify them better, Kayuka said to Kendo with a small smile and placing a hand on his shoulder, causing the orange haired to bow his head in defeat. To the team of the acid ponies and also the invisible wraiths, Kendo said tiredly, so then Kayuka and Momo let out a little funny giggles at those names and Kendo joined them in at least having a little fun despite the situation they were in. Meanwhile, Yanagi, Yui, and Toru walked through the halls of the fourth floor, with the nurse girl walking behind the B-class girls. So we were cosplaying and playing to challenge each other, Toru said happily as he tried to make the lie they had been told convincing. I just asked you how they found Midoriya, Yui said, somewhat tired of listening to Toru ramble without having answered the question he asked her almost five minutes ago. Ah, we found him asleep and half-naked on the floor of the common room, Toru replied simply, then stiffened when she realized that he had responded very sincerely by revealing that he was without clothes. S half-naked, Yui asked in surprise and blushing without being able to help but make a mental image of the boy, which caused her calm countenance to be more disturbed by nerves. 
as he was only in his underpants, so we covered him with a blanket, Toru said, playing with his hands with a small blush on his cheeks to try not to cause suspicion. Then you can still be half-naked while you're hidden, Yanagi said calmly and monotonously as she looked in different directions. Of course she also made a mental image and her cheeks were flushed but the darkness helped hide it. Thee please don't say that Ryaiko, the last thing I need now is to have that in mind, Yui said closing her eyes and trying to get that image out of her head, she would just keep it deep in her mind in case she needs it. It's better not to ask about it. Then the sound of the communicator catches the attention of the three girls and Yanagi pulls it to his ear to hear the transmission. Yes, asked Ryaiko to hear what Kendo was saying on the other end of the line. Here or on the fifth floor, are you sure? She asked calmly, then nodded her head. Okay, we'll be careful, he said, and then cut off the communication. What's going on? Toru asked the gray-haired girl who turned to look at them neutrally. Apparently Jiru used his quirk to try to locate Midoriya and suppose he may be on this floor or the fifth. We must stay alert. Hinagi replied causing both girls to be a little surprised and then nod to continue walking cautiously to any sound or movement they witness. They turn in a corridor and manage to see how one of the doors was open and from that clear sounds could be heard that attracted the attention of the three girls who tensed and put themselves on guard preparing for the case they were forced to attack Izuku. My room, Yui asked earnestly as the three of them got close enough to wait to enter the room. I can't help much, I'll stay behind, Toru said seriously, since wearing clothes would not be useful to his invisibility, so it was best not to be a hindrance to his team. The three girls wait a few seconds and then enter pointing their flashlights at the male figure that was there and hearing a growl they acted on impulse. Yui enlarged a ball he had taken and Yanagi with his quirk sent it in the direction of the boy inside, who rubbed his eyes to regain his vision in the light of the flashlights. There they watched as the giant ball hit the boy's forehead, which produced the sound of a metallic thump. Hey, cried the boy, shocked and in pain, as he fell backwards to the ground from the impact on his forehead. The three girls pointed their flashlights at the boy as they approached and saw a half-naked Tetsu Tetsu rubbing his ass, at least making his metal head to cushion the blow to his forehead. Tetsu Tetsu, what are you doing here? Inagi asked her gray-haired friend calmly and unaffected at all by seeing Tetsu Tetsu's body, of course if it were Izuku it would be another story. We thought they had all been defeated by Midoriya, Yui said to his friend and classmate who stood up from the ground to see the girls in front of him with a big smile. Hello girls it's good to see you right now, Midoriya swept us away but it wasn't enough to leave me out, so I was chasing him and this is where I lost track of him. Tetsu Tetsu replied with his hands on his waist while the girls focused more on his state, having noticeable bruises on his torso, arms and legs, and bloodlines descended from his forehead and lips. You're in a very bad state, you shouldn't move much, Toru told Tetsu Tetsu, worried about him and honoring her nurse outfit for caring about the injured boy. Nonsense, I must show Midoriya that I am as manly as he is, exclaimed Tetsu Tetsu with a big smile being inspired and excited as he clenched a fist in front of him. You know he's drunk, don't you? Inagi asked, clearly doubting if his friend was right in the head after Izuku's beating of them. That doesn't matter, he's certainly a man to be feared for the way he defeated us, but for that very reason I must make myself more of a man by finding him and defeating him, replied Tetsu Tetsu, making it clear that he would not back down from his decision because that's what a man does. After that, some sounds from the hallway caught the attention of the three girls and the boy who turned to look in the direction of the door. Do you hear that? Asked Toru, a little afraid that they would meet Izuku now. Stay tuned, Yui said earnestly as she and her friends stood guard and prepared themselves. I'm ready for round two, Midoriya, exclaimed Tetsu Tetsu with a defiant smile as he stared at the door as he turned his entire body into metal. They heard the accelerated footsteps approaching them and the tension was rising. Being able to feel that there were only seconds left for them to meet the cause of everything, there were only seconds left. 3, 2, 1, and uh, shouted Mina as she entered the room preparing her acid to attack. But both she and those inside froze when they saw that the green-haired man they were looking for was not there. Mina, asked Toru, confused to see her friend there even though she should be upstairs. Oh, thank god I found them exclaimed Mina in relief, and then ran to her secret friend to wrap her in a tight embrace. What's going on, where's Pony Chan? Yui asked the haired woman curiously and calmly, causing Mina to widen her eyes as she remembered what happened and consequently began to tremble a little. D, it was really scary, we couldn't do anything, Mina said with fear in her voice remembering what had happened a few minutes ago on the top floor, causing intrigue in the others. What are you talking about? Tetsu Tetsu asked Mina intriguingly as she returned her skin to normal. Tetsu Tetsu, how come you're here? Mina asked the gray-haired man curiously as she barely noticed his presence. Just tell us what happened, Yui said to the hairy woman in a more serious way as she wanted to know what happened to Pony. Mina nodded and proceeded to speak. We were looking on the fifth floor, Pony and I went to Hong Kuni Kun's room and at first glance we didn't find Midoriya, but she said leaving a silence in which her expression darkened and she seemed a little more frightened than before. But, Yanagi said, wanting the girl to continue explaining what had happened. But he quickly exited the vent without giving us time to react and used his quirk to trap Pony with his black whips. Mina continued, recalling the moment that was still fresh in her mind and causing the rest to be surprised. 
I tried to free her, but he, he gave me a look that left me paralyzed, added the hairy woman lowering her head causing the shadow to cover her eyes, which prevented the others from seeing the blush that was on her cheeks as she remembered the look she received from. Hey. After that he took her through the ventilation and I couldn't ask for help since she had the communicator, he concluded, looking up calmer. This is bad. We've lost Sunotori san Toru said worriedly and somewhat fearfully as she held her hands on her chest hoping that her friend was okay. We must warn the others, Yui said to Yanagi who nodded her head to take the communicator planning to report what happened. One question, why is Klasa here? Asked Tetsu Tetsu, clearly distracted by the presence of the girls in the place. We'll explain it to you later, said Toru and Mina at the same time seeing the boy who didn't give it any more thought and accepted. Meanwhile on the first floor were Yuraka and Kanoko sitting on one of the sofas in the common room that had been placed near the lantern. This piece of furniture was in a deplorable state and it was necessary for Yuraka with his quirk to arrange it so that they could both sit down. Both of them had already checked the condition of the other boys and carefully placed them near a corner so that they were not lying all over the place. I hope they're all okay up there, Kanoko said with a little concern for her friends and colleagues who would be in greater danger on the upper floors. So do I. Anyway it's good to see that all the boys are just unconscious, Yuraka said with a small relieved smile. The truth is that they were hurt but not as much as would be expected from all the power that Izuku has presented with his attacks. So I could say he didn't attack to kill. I still can't believe that the boys in class have abandoned Midoriya in such a state, it seems to me something very wrong of them, Kanoko said to Yuraka frowning a little under her bangs that only revealed her left eye. I thought so too, but maybe they had their reasons, Yuraka replied calmly and looking away from the ceiling, causing the little chestnut of class B to be intrigued. What do you mean? asked Kanoko curiously, seeing the way the boys finished. Surely ours had it just as difficult against Deku Kun and maybe even several were knocked out. I guess the best alternative in that case is to take the wounded and flee, Yuraka explained calmly, understanding a little of his friends who must have made an effort to stop Izuku. I guess it's true, it's hard to imagine that Bakugu would want to run away from Midoriya, Kanoko said smiling a little amused as she scratched one cheek, causing Yuraka to smile the same way as she nodded her head. Right, because of their fated battle between men, Yuraka said, and then they both laughed a little and then remained in a comfortable silence for a few seconds until Komori decided to speak again. Anyway I don't like that Mina threatened him like that, it's clear that Midoriya was going to accept, Kanoko opined clearly disgusted with Mina's actions and presence. In reality both she and the rest of the girls did not approve of his existence to the point where they no longer saw him as a human being, just like a pervert. True, Deku-kun is very kind and always thinks about helping others, surely he would accept again without thinking about it, said Yuraka smiling warmly as she looked at the lantern and thought about the altruistic and heroic way of being of her best friend and platonic love. Kinoko smiled affectionately, staring into her lap and then sighed spellbound. That's right, said the brunette causing Yuraka to raise an eyebrow at her, after all she was intrigued to know how Kinoko could say that in that way as if she knew him closely. How do you know Deku-kun so well? Yuraka asked Kanoko curiously and causing the B-class girl to get a little nervous. And it's not that I know him very well. After all it's common knowledge that he's kind and heroic, Kamori said, smiling a little nervously, then calming down as he looked into her lap. But on a few occasions we started talking about mushrooms and in the end we ended up talking about ourselves. I guess that way I got a more personal idea of what he is like, kind, generous and innocent. Kanoko replied with feeling in her tone as she put her hands to her chest. Yuraka inevitably felt jealous but despite that she could notice the way in which Kanoko talked about Izuku, a way that did not seem to be perverted like Mina. She could honestly believe for a few moments that maybe Kanoko would actually be in love with Izuku. It was only a guess but the truth could get along well with her if she understood how good Izuku is, despite feeling jealous. The sound of the communicator captures the attention of both girls and Yuraka brings it to her ear to hear what they have to say. Yes, asked Yuraka curiously to hear Yanaga's voice on the other side. Is Tetsu Tetsu with you? It's a relief since we couldn't find him down here, she said smiling with relief while Kanoko was the same knowing that her friend was okay. Which Deku-kun can move through the vent and caught Pony-chan, that's bad, exclaimed Yuraka in surprise and causing Komori to start. Yes, we'll let you know if we get to know anything else, be careful, she told Yanagi and then cut off the communication. Yuraka turned to Kanoko to explain what she heard, but Komori stopped him with one hand. There's no need to explain anything, I could hear you, Kanoko said with a serious expression. Don't you have some kind of blueprints? That way it might be easier to find Deku-kun, Yuraka asked her B-class friend who crossed her arms and placed a hand on her chin to start thinking. I think Kan-sensei kept it in the closet on this floor so they wouldn't get lost, Kanoko said vaguely, remembering her teacher's words when they arrived at the third-year dorms on the first day. Great, let's go get them, exclaimed Yuraka with a lively smile and a determined look, receiving a nod from Kanoko and then both chestnuts got up from the sofa for the B-class girl to show the way. They both began to walk through the hallways on the first floor and passed by the girls' restrooms until they reached a door at the end of the hallway. It was not a problem to open it and both cautiously pointed their flashlights inside to see a room with four walls of six meters in diameter in which utensils, trinkets and other things were found. 
Are you sure she's here? Yuraka asked Kinoko, a little wary of entering the dark room. If I wasn't completely, I wouldn't have walked through the dark corridors, Kanoko replied, trying to keep her fear to a minimum and then both of them entered and shone in different directions in search of the planes. It took a couple of minutes until Kanoko managed to visualize a blue piece of paper that she approached to review its contents and get excited. I found them, cried the chestnut happily, causing Yuraka to give up her search and approach her. Great, now we'd better go, said Yuraka relieved, receiving a nod from Kanoko and then they both started heading towards the exit. But they both stopped dead in their tracks when a metallic sound from the ceiling caught their attention. It was faint to the point of almost going unnoticed. But they both stiffened when they heard it for only a second, and then saw themselves again in the silence that had become heavy in the room. That's Midoriya. Kinoko asked Yuraka beside her with clear fear and nervousness as she hugged the planes. Yuraka certainly wasn't any better but he tried to keep his composure and pointed his flashlight at the ceiling trying to catch another sound. Maybe it wouldn't be anything really. I think we'd better leave at once, said Yuraka seriously, looking at Kanoko so as not to tempt her fate. I think it's for the best, Kanoko replied with a nod of her head, and they both walked back in the direction of the exit. If you want, go create some sleeping mushrooms, Yuraka said to her friend cautiously as she left the room while Kanoko followed her from behind. Kanoko was just about to do that as she slowly walked away from the closet door they left open, but out of nowhere black whips came from the darkness of the room to quickly go against Kanoko to grab her by the waist. Kayola. Kinoko shrieked in fright, dropping the blueprints while the whips were tied around her waist, wrists, and ankles. Komori-san, exclaimed Yuraka extending her hand in Kinoko's direction to grab her and try to free her, but before Komori is pulled in the direction of the dark closet forcefully, dropping her flashlight in the process and leaving Yuraka shocked. Yuraka started running in the direction of the closet to save her friend and when she entered she pointed her flashlight at the center of the room where she was stunned to see Izuku standing with her hair in full shadow over her eyes and not wearing any cat ornaments on her body. But what surprised Yuraka was the sight of him putting one arm around Kanoko's waist as he gave a passionate and aggressive kiss on the lips to the B-class girl who couldn't resist being tied up and at his mercy while her cheeks were flushed. Yuraka quickly enters his senses to see Izuku. Stop, Deku-kun, let her go, shouted Yuraka to the green-haired man who seemed to have ignored her as he continued in the kiss for several more seconds until he finally released Kanoko's mouth that was breathing heavily while a trickle of saliva fell from the corner of her mouth. Izuku then turns to look in the direction of Yuraka while his eyes are still completely covered. The silence on his part was intimidating and even gloomy while he just stood still and Kanoko seemed not to be in his senses at that moment. Then the green-haired man took a single step forward and the chestnut instinctively backed away too as his logical thinking told him that he had no chance against the predator in front of him. Izuku took another step forward, and Yurikaka, even if he didn't want to, backed up again. But what happened next was what really surprised Yuraka, because Izuku only smiled sideways in a predatory way. Just smiled and then in a matter of seconds covered himself with the one for all holding Kanoko with his black wisp and then moved with incredible agility in the direction of the ventilation duct that was in the wall of the closet through which he entered. Deku-kun exclaimed Uraka, extending his hand in the direction of his best friend who was out of his senses in the small hope that he would stop to listen to him, but he did not. Uraka ran in pursuit of him but was not fast enough to prevent Izuku from getting in there along with Kanoko to take her to who knows how to give, leaving the room silent and with a stunned brunette who was processing at full speed what had just happened. She yelled to herself, mentally alarmed, to grab the communicator and head to the hallway where she took Kanoko's flashlight and the plans for the building. The group of Momo, Kendo and Kayuka were walking around the second floor until they heard the sound of the communicator, to which Kendo gives it to Momo to respond to. What's wrong? Momo asked curiously to Yuraka who began to tell her what happened, which caused Momo to widen her eyes. What? Komori-san, too, asked Momo, surprised and causing Kayuka and Kendo to be equally shocked. What? Did he catch Kanoko too? Kendo asked, surprised and worried about her brunette friend who was in Izuku's hands at the time. Momo continued to listen to what Yuraka was saying. You have the plans for the building. I understand, that's very useful for sure, we're on our way, stay on guard and we'll all regroup to formulate a strategy, Momo said seriously, and then ended the communication and looked back at her teammates. We'd better hurry, Kayuka said with a serious look on her two friends' nods, and then the three of them started running in the direction of the stairs. At one point, after turning a corner, Kayuka's ears hear the faint sound of metallic thumping, which causes her to stop in her tracks to look in different directions for the source of the sound while Kendo and Momo continue to run, leaving her behind. I swear I heard something nearby, Kayuka said, ignoring the fact that she's alone and approaching one of the walls to use her quirk to locate Izuku. There he could visualize how on the upper floor the green team ran in the direction of the stairs, how Kendo and Momo did the same on this floor and how Yuraka was alone on the first floor. What really frightened her was to feel how she perceived more intense sound waves right above her until suddenly they stopped at the moment when a metallic sound in the corridor caught her attention. 
Kayuka shone in the middle of the corridor to see a crack lying on the floor. She approached it cautiously feeling that she was doing something wrong and when she got to the front she could see that it was a vent crack, to which she raised her flashlight to the duct that was in the ceiling and there she saw it. She was watching him from the dugout with her eyes covered in darkness. Kayuka saw him. To him, this would be the perfect time to scream, Kayuka said with an emotionless expression, accepting what was about to happen to her since she had brought it on herself. Minutes later, there was no sign of Kayuka other than her flashlight and heels, which had been left lying on the ground. Meanwhile, on the first floor, Yuraka was in the common room, along with the sofa and dining table that he had moved to place the lantern above it, along with the plans for the building. Yuraka stood with her hands on the table in earnest while the girls were already arriving in her direction. We're here, exclaimed Setsuna, catching her breath a little after the race they made to get down the stairs. How are you? Kendo asked the brunette who had met Izuku. Well, I don't think I can say the same about Komori-san, Yuraka replied bowing her head in shame of not having been able to do anything because of fear. She could not save her friend ironically from the boy they were both interested in. The important thing is that you have the plans of the building. With that maybe we can know where Izuku-kun took them, Momo said with a small smile placing a hand on her shoulder to try to cheer her up. Apart from the fact that they had their clear differences in terms of the game, in those moments they needed to collaborate and cheering her was a way for everyone to be okay. It's good to see that I won't be alone to find Midoriya, it will be more manly to beat him as a team, Tetsu Tetsu said with his fist clenched in front of him and with a wide smile while still half naked, but this seemed to matter nothing to the girls present. You will only attack him if necessary, we try to calm him down without using violence, Yui told her friend with slight seriousness so that Tetsu Tetsu wouldn't start attacking Izuku like crazy when they were calming him down. All right, Tetsu Tetsu agreed, not really having a problem with it, or that it was Bakugou. Where's Kayuka chan Momo asked openly as she looked in different directions looking for her friend and ally whom she didn't see. She was behind us when we were coming, Kendo said, also looking for the A-class rocker who was dressed as a secretary. Hard not to see her. Don't tell me her, Toru began, coming to a bad conclusion as he put his hands to his mouth. He caught her too, Mina completed with the flashlight shining on her face from below, causing Ibarra to be a little scared. Good God, please don't let anything bad happen to them, Ibarra prayed, clapping her hands together, a little frightened and really worried about her three friends. After that, the sound of static is heard from one of the communicators which belongs to Setsuna. Everyone looked at her intrigued since no one was calling her and before that Kendo came to a conclusion. Pay attention, it's from Pony Sen's communicator, exclaimed Kendo attentively and then took the communicator and activated the speaker so that everyone could hear the transmission. Ah ha ha, please stop Midoriya, the sound of female moans and English words was what everyone heard from the communicator and at that they stiffened. What the fuck? Setsuna asked, surprised by the sound of gasping and breathing on the other end of the line. That's Pony's voice, Yui said blushing and incredulous as she heard her blonde friend's voice like that. And no again Midoriya, and don't touch there, said another female voice in a broken voice and then moaned sweetly. That's Komori-san, exclaimed Araka, surprised to hear her friend also making such sounds as well. Sex, what's Midoriya doing to them? Asked Ibarra, blushing at the sinful sounds coming from the communicator. I think it's obvious to know what you're doing to them, Jiro, Tsuyu said also blushing and with a finger on her chin as she inevitably rubbed her thighs as she remembered how she herself made those sounds in the closet with Izuku. P. Why is he doing that to them? Kendo asked with her cheeks flushed and clearly nervous when she heard those kinds of sounds coming from her friends. She couldn't even get a picture of what Izuku would be doing to them. And no, we don't know either, exclaimed Toru, nervously, shaking his hands in front of him, looking very suspicious. You guys are hiding something from us, Yanagi said seriously and sharpening his gaze looking at the girls of class A. Since it was not at all normal that someone drunk in this case Izuku was going to do that for no reason, so they were the most suspicious. Momo shook her head, trying to keep her composure. See of course not, everything is as we told you, now apparently Izuku-kun is behaving like this because of alcohol. She lied trying to keep the truth hidden, because perhaps it was their fault for getting him used to acting in a perverted way because of the game. This happened in a softer way when Izuku had subjected them to her, Yuraka and Tsuyu in bed. He please let me rest, that's a lot, said a third female voice that attracted everyone's attention again when they recognized her. Kayuka chan exclaimed Momo, taking the communicator away from Kendo in the hope that her friend would hear her. See girls, asked Kayuka from the other end of the call. Where are they? Tell us something to save them. Mina yelled to her friend in a slightly upset way. We are, next to the G generator. Kayuka replied in a choked voice as she breathed her breath back. The generator, where is it? Kendo asked the girl from Class A, hoping to get the location to rescue them all. Nuo, don't press there. Kayuka moaned and then began to pant and moan tenderly because of Izuku. After that, everyone heard someone take the communicator to bring it to their face as they could hear the breaths. Three down, was Izuku's voice in a way that was both deeper and more intimidating and imposing, which caused some of the likes of Mina, Setsuna, and Toru to shudder at the tone used. After that, the transmission is cut off, leaving them all in a sepulchral silence in which everyone processed what they had just heard. 
Some were simply still confused and embarrassed by the moans, but others were a little frightened by Izuku's voice. Okay, I think it would be appropriate to call a teacher to help us, Tetsu Tetsu said, breaking out in a cold sweat, acknowledging that he was a little scared and that they could use professional help. No, they would punish Deku-kun for something that is not his fault, exclaimed Yuraka denying the option as he looked at Tetsu Tetsu seriously. Kiriwaro said you brought Midoriya, how was he when you saw him? Setsuna asked his gray-haired friend curiously, catching his attention. A little dizzy and he behaved a little strangely, but he was still friendly and I invited him to drink with us. After a few bottles he started drinking it all by himself and when we tried to stop him it became that. Tetsu Tetsu replied calmly remembering the chain of events. It's your fault that he's behaving like this. If he hadn't drunk more than this wouldn't happen, Momo said to Tetsu Tetsu accusatorily as he pointed at him and Yuraka, Tsuyu and Mina agreed, but then Kendo stands in front of his friend to defend him. Hey, we're not here to blame anyone, we need to save our friends and stop Midoriya, Kendo told the A-class girls firmly and seriously as they had to focus on what's important at the moment. Itsuka is right, we can't start arguing silly, Yanagi said calmly and neutrally as he took a few steps forward. Jiro said they were next to the generator, we need to see the blueprints to know where that is, Yui declared seriously, capturing the attention of everyone who coincided with her and noticed the blueprints that were on the table. These show the structure of rooms, drains, electrical system and also ventilation of the entire building. After analyzing for a few seconds they see that the generator is located 4 meters below the bedrooms and that it is only accessible by a single elevator located in a room on the 5th floor. Another means to enter would be by means of the ventilation system but the path was a drop of several meters high to the underground room where the generator was. What kind of gimmicky access is this? Setsuna asked annoyably, scratching his head in exasperation at such a ridiculous way to access the generator. This reminds me a bit of Resident Evil, Tetsu Tetsu commented, recalling the implausibility of the Arclay Mansion for so many reasons. Then we need to find that room and take the elevator down to the generator, Momo said, crossing her arms and with a serious look on her face as she fixed her glasses. We also have to watch out for vents where Midoriya can try to catch us, Kendo added, sharpening his eyes sternly at how complicated the task would be. There's something strange to me, Yuraka said as she sat on the couch looking into her lap. What's the matter, Yuraka chan Jiro, Tsuyu asked her brunette friend curiously. Deku-kun could have taken me too, but he didn't, Yuraka replied, remembering the moment Izuku stared at him and moved slowly forward. Maybe because I knew that if you touched him I'd be at a disadvantage, Yanagi said calmly, considering Yuraka's quirk and Izuku's way of thinking. I don't think that's it, when he was in front of me. He smiled and left, Yuraka clarified, remembering that smile that for a moment caused his whole body to shudder, not completely from fright but from the alluring sense of danger that he gave off. As if she were enjoying her hunt, Mina commented with her mouth slightly open and with a small blush on her cheeks at the mere thought of being the prey of the boy who gave pleasure to the girls he caught. Now she wished she had been the one to be caught and not Pony. Earlier he said there were three less referring to Pony, Kanoko and Jiru. Surely he's just enjoying this as a game, Ibarra theorized a little thoughtfully as she had a hand on her chin looking at the rest. But you have to think about it, then he wants to win since he took the ones that were more dangerous to catch him. Momo said calmly, thoroughly analyzing the actions of the green-haired man who had kidnapped her three friends. You're right, Pony has great physical strength and with her horns she could chase him or else run away, said Mina coinciding with the black-haired woman to realize the danger that the blonde represented. Kanoko could have created several mushrooms to put him to sleep or paralyze him, Yui said, acknowledging the possible threat the chestnut posed to the boy. And Kayuka chan could use his quirk to try to locate him, Toru continued, his hands clasped on his chest, actually feeling a little scared at the thought of how well Izuku had chosen his prey. He's meticulously selecting to hunt us down and in the end be victorious, Setsuna concluded seriously and his hands on his waist while more than one swallowed hard at the mere idea of being the prey locked up with the predator that had so far taken three of them. They're giving him a lot of thought, he just wants to catch us and that's it, said Tetsu Tetsu smiling simply and a little amused by the drama the girls were giving him. I don't think he'd want to catch you, otherwise he'd knock you out, Setsuna replied, smiling mockingly at the gray-haired man. I can't wait to see him try it now, exclaimed Tetsu Tetsu with a defiant smile and clenched a fist in front of him. Anyway, we already know what we need to do, go to the secret elevator on the fifth floor to go to the generator and stop Izuku-kun, Momo said with an authoritarian and serious demeanor while all the others agreed with her, now that they were all together they had more chance of achieving it. Are you all ready? Kendo asked the rest seriously, earning everyone's nods. Here we go, said Yuraka getting up from the couch with a determined look ready to go through all that situation to have Izuku back and take him back to the bedrooms where he would finally end the stupid game created by Mina. Jiro, Tsuyu said a little nervously but determined to do her best to stop and get back the boy she has a crush on. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku got free harem. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Masasin Maze for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.